W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer, but that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddie Law Firm. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. Good morning and welcome to Ram Stadium on the campus of Shepherd's, Shepherd University in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, here for Shepherd Rams football as the Rams welcome in their regional rivals, the Shippensburg Raiders, just an hour down the road in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. They make the trip down 81 to Ram Stadium for this matchup, a rivalry that these two teams have met 22 times heading into this one. Shepard leads the all-time series 12-10, to and the Rams are on a six-game winning streak. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. And, Travis, this is a Shippensburg team coming in at 1-3. and Shepard 3-1. and Coach McCook said it to me, though, this week. Anytime you're playing in a rivalry game, you throw those records out the window. Absolutely, and you look at the game so far this year, all of them have been pretty tough contests for the Rams, so there's no reason for Shepard to overlook this team, and it's an opportunity for the Rams to bounce back after a disappointing loss last week. Granted, the weather conditions did play a large role in how the Rams played offensively, but Cutsdown had to play in those exact same conditions, and they were able to put together enough plays to come away with the win. Now the Rams, with that bitter home loss fresh in their minds, they can come out here today on a beautiful Saturday and get back on the right way of things as far as winning ball games and defeat this Shippensburg team that's coming in off of their first win of the season versus Bloomsburg last week. Yeah, winning a sloppy 7 nothing game in the weather last week over Bloomsburg. This is a Shippensburg team that has struggled offensively, only averaging 13.5 points per game. They've had injuries at the quarterback position. Currently their listed starter is Sam Stoner, a freshman from York, Pennsylvania. But Joey McCracken has been a guy that they expected to be their starter. He's dealing with an injury. Sam Johnson the third, you may remember that name if you're a Shepherd fan from last season, as he was their starter from Boston College, has played some uh, minutes as well. And Evan Falco, I believe we've even seen him out there on the field for Shippensburg over the last few seasons. So They've tried to figure it out with the injury to McCracken. Looks like Stoner's going to be their starting guy here today, Travis. And as the old adage goes, when you have four quarterbacks, that means that you don't have one quarterback. So and they've tried a variety of looks. Actually, we're, we're kind of surprised. We remember the game last year when Shepard was at Shippensburg, and we were expecting big things out of then starter Sam Johnson III, but that is no longer the case. Like you said, Stoner, and coming into today's contest last week, struggled a bit, went two for six for 25 yards. Again, weather was a huge factor, but they did enough to come away with to get with the win, the 5'11", 210-pound freshman is going to look to give that Raiders offense a spark today on the road versus Shepard. And you look back to last season, Shippensburg really settled into a groove on the road. They went 4-2 and two on the road last year. So possibly something where they maybe they're a little bit more comfortable on the road trying to come away with the win. 
When you look at the Shepard offense, they average 27.25 points per game, so they've been pretty explosive offensively. But what's interesting on this season, the Rams have only outscored their opponents by one point, so it's been close games early and often for the Rams so far this year, Travis. And fortunately for the Rams, they've been able to pull out a majority of those games. So you know this is a team that can fight its way through adversity and be able to answer that question early on is a good thing for this program moving forward and getting deeper into this season. But every once in a while, you want to win a game with a little bit of breathing room so you can walk away with some confidence and you won't have to go out and buy as much Pepto-Bismol when you're preparing preparing for your uh, game coming up the following week. All right, we'll take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll now get into our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. Coach, a uh, tough loss for your team on Saturday against Cutstown. Turnovers were the key issue for you guys. Uh, how have you been working on that? Working on preventing those this week? Well, we worked on preventing them going into the game. We've, that's something we do every day. Um, you can't turn the ball over five times and expect to have a chance to win. Uh, Kutztown's a good football team. Uh, they played extremely well on defense. I thought our defense played extremely well, forced a couple turnovers. Uh, but ultimately, the way we gave the ball away cost us that football game. You mentioned the defense after giving up some big plays against Cal and still forcing turnovers in that game. Really a good game against Kutztown for them. So the yeah. positive, I think, taking away from that is the defense seemed to show a step forward. Sure, absolutely. Defense played great. They uh, they held up when their backs were against the wall. Um, hopefully we'll continue to build on that and make it tough sledding for any of our opponents that we play against. In particular, Amari Terry had a real standout game, got a sack, an interception. He's a guy that can play a lot of different positions like Anilio Pena. How do having those two guys uh, help you defensively? Yeah, they, they you know they're both high energy guys. They have great work ethics. They prepare every every day to be the best they possibly can be. Um, and I think that they're still they're still have ways to go, and there you see them getting better every day. Shippensburg, a big rival of yours. Uh, what is I guess the mindset heading into this game? Well, you know, we 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 had to first of all fix us. You know, I had to do the things that we need to do to have our football team ready to go. When Shippensburg and Shepherd play, you can throw the records out the window. It's going to be a tough ball game. Two, two teams that are relatively close to each other. We recruited a lot of the same players. Uh, I think it's going to be a great ball game. I think there's going to be a lot of energy in the stadium. 
Uh, but we'll have to play better than we did last week in order to find a way to be in it in the end. They were able to get a 7 nothing win over Bloomsburg last week. What have you seen from them so far this year? Well, they're not giving up a lot of points on defense. Uh, I think IUP did score some, but other than that, they held Newberry relatively, you know, to not many points, uh, and as well as Seton Hill. I think that was a tough ball game back and forth. And then last week against Bloom and the weather, their defense is playing extremely well. I think they've got some injuries at quarterback. They could get McCracken back. Uh, so we'll see how it on Saturday how it plays out. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you. That concludes our coach interview brought to you by Parsons Ford, located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first Parsons. This is Shepherd Rams Football on TV10. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rear view mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Hey, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Welcome you back here to Ram Stadium in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer, Daryl and Matt Miller on camera this afternoon. Colin McLaughlin back in the studio here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. W. Harley Miller Systems providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. Travis, we talked a lot about the offenses in that first segment. Let's take a look at these two teams' defenses. Shippensburg defensively has been their strength. They had a Newberry team. They held them to just 14 in week one. They were ranked 24th in the country, so a good week one performance from them. Gave up 28 to Seton Hill. Not too bad in a back-and-forth kind of game. Indiana, PA, uh, put up 49, but a shutout last week on the season. The Raiders' defense just allowing 22 points per, per a game and has been pretty solid overall, just 3.3 yards per carry and giving up 164.5 passing yards per game as well. And when looking at the Raiders' defense, one of the players that jumps off the sheet at you immediately is Evan Townsend Henry, the grad student transfer coming over from Pace University, located in Pleasantville, New York, is so far doing very well this season. 21 tackles, 13 of those solo, five and a half tackles for loss. Like I said, six foot two thirty. He's manning the middle of that defense and shows tremendous range, being able to make tackles from sideline to sideline. So if your middle linebacker is one of your standouts on defense, chances are you have a pretty good defense, and they have a lot of veterans on that side of the ball. So it's going to be a very good matchup in terms of that Shepherd offense versus that Shippensburg defense. We already know Shepherd's offense had a little bit of 
trouble last week getting anything going, so that Raiders defense is going to look to try to take control early and try to dictate to that offense and really put them in a one-dimensional situation where they're having to throw passes, and that's something that this Rams offense has had difficulty doing is trying to attack down the field on the sidelines. They do a good job of throwing things underneath or or throwing those off-speed pitches, so to speak, and letting the wide receivers make plays. So that's something that the Raiders defense is going to have to key on, and that's going to be really on the safeties to try to limit those 50-50 balls and really either go get the ball themselves or put a big hit on the wide receiver and put that thought in the back of their head that coming down with those catches may not be as easy as they thought coming into today's contest. You look at the Shepard defense giving up 27 points per game so far, but the last two weeks have shown some progress, even though they gave up 34 points to Cal, which was the is the most they've given up all season. They forced turnovers in that game. They forced turnovers last week, and really defensively wasn't the issue. It was just they were on the field way too long, 41 minutes Kutztown had in possession. So what are you seeing from the Shepard defense in terms of the growth from week one to now? Well, one, they're, they're getting more and more stingy versus the run. And like you mentioned against Kutztown, when you have that lopsided, you have that kind of disparity in time of possession going up against a team like Kutztown that wants to ground and pound and wear you down over the course of the game, it was just a tough job for that Shepherd defense. But the defense did enough to keep the offense in the game. It's just they're going to have to score points on the offensive side of the ball. That defense can't be out there all day. Like we mentioned, they're not a very big group up front. They're built with speed and athleticism in mind. So the longer they're out there, the less and less effective they're going to be throughout the course of the day. But like you mentioned, they're starting to get more pressure on the quarterback. That was something that we didn't see early on in the season, and they've done it in a variety of ways. You mentioned the Cal PA game. They made that switch where they went to a 3-3 stack, and what that allows you to do is use a whole host of different type of blitz packages. It also really eliminates or limits what you can do as far as double teams up front. After the Cal PA game, they've gone back to that four-man front, but they've added some wrinkles to it where those defensive linemen are shifting at the last second. That's very tough for an offensive lineman to make an adjustment right before that ball snap. Also, Shepard is is using stunts and different looks like that because you want to use the athleticism and the speed of those defensive linemen. So if you can get them moving and have those offensive linemen having to change responsibilities again at the last second, it's going to create some mismatches and hopefully get some pressure on the quarterback. And when you get pressure on the quarterback, you're hoping to force some turnovers. All right, let's take another two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from Shepard Rams linebacker Omari Terry as well as center James Bell. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in two minutes with our player interviews. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. 
We now go in the huddle, brought to you by the Myriad Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue or give them a call at 304-263-4343. We now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams center, James Bell. James, uh, transitioning to the starting job this year after Adam Stilley graduated. What were some things you kind of learned from Adam and how is the... Now, how's it feel to now be a starter? You know, I learned a lot from Adam sitting behind him for three years, obviously him being a Division One transfer and just knowing the game so well, it really rubbed off on me. And, you know, being a starter feels great. I love, love the guys I play next to. You know, I've been playing with Ty and Wyatt here. This is year four for us and Curtis. So love those guys. They make my job really easy. They have a lot of experience, which makes it easier on me. Coach Clark comes in, new quarterback as well. What's that transition been like? You know, I think Coach Clark's done a good job. Uh, when he first came in, it was a little little slow for him to learn the terminology and learn the playbook, but now that he really has, we've been picking it up. We've been rolling. Seth does a good job getting everyone aligned, making sure we're doing the right things at the right time. You know, I love Seth, love Coach Clark. I think they're both great additions to this team. How has that helped keeping that terminology the same, especially for the center? You know, you have to call a lot of things up front. You know, I think it's I think it's helped a lot. Um, you know, me and Adam always talked about terminology, and we always we help make up some of the terms that we use today. So being able to keep the terms that we've been using is really nice. For some young guys behind you, you've had to have guys step in when you've had injuries up front. Uh, just what have you seen from the entire group of the offensive line this year? I think I think we're a deep group. I mean, Wyatt's talked about it numerous times. Coach McCook's probably talked about it. We're a deep group, you know. We got the first five. We got Curtis making us better every day as our sixth man. Josh is a freshman at center who's really stepped into the role. Took some reps with the ones against Edinburgh when I went out. So, you know, he's made us really proud. And I think this entire unit comes to work every day. We work hard. And it's really showed every day on Saturday. Unfortunately, in Kutztown, game didn't go your guys' way. Yeah. Five turnovers. How do you... Uh, work on the turnovers this week and try to keep those down against Shippensburg. Man, I think it all starts with Malachi. You know, he's been working his working his butt off this week. He's been using bad balls, working on his ball security. Um, you know, and that's just it's one of those things. Those things kind of happen. You know, kind of roll with the punches. Wyatt said when we came back on Sunday, just because we lost Saturday doesn't mean we have to lose Sunday. Doesn't mean we have to lose Monday. Keep working every day, hopefully to beat Shippensburg. What have you seen from Shippensburg so far? Uh, you know, they're a good team. They're athletic. They're quick. They fly around. They don't like us. We don't like them. It's pretty simple. When they come to town, we want to kick them out of here with a loss, you know. All right, James, good luck this week. Appreciate it. Thank you. We now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams safety slash linebacker Amari Terry. Amari, a uh, big game for you. You got an interception and a sack against Kutztown. What were some things uh, that you were trying to do in the game? I was just trying to do my best to uh, get a win for my team and do what I can on my end in order to uh, pull off the dub against Kutztown. You and Anilio Pena are two guys that are pretty similar in terms of you can play a lot of different positions on this defense. Uh, just talk about how you've been able to do a lot of different things and, and either play back and kind of play in safety role or linebacker role for this team. I feel like uh, last year, like the coaches did a good job of dealing me in that uh, free safety and weak safety a lot. So like going into this year, like I moved down a star. So like I've been able to put all them things together and been able to make plays uh, in the passing game and in the uh, run game. Every time this team's on defense, it seems like you're always trying to be one of those leaders out there, fire the guys up. Uh, how has the leadership role been something that you've really tried to do this year? Uh, I've just been trying to give my guys a spark and like uh, allow other guys to make plays and like trying to get everybody the energy and bring that energy to the team so everybody can make plays and we all can be on one accord and win a game. You're one of the bigger hitters on this team. Do you have a favorite hit so far this season? Uh, not really. I just... <laughs> I just be playing like <laughs> I ain't really got no favorite hit yet. Heading into this week against uh, Shippensburg, what are some things that you've seen from their offense that you guys will have to do defensively to stop them? I feel like uh, Shippensburg do a, a lot of uh, a good job at balancing their offense, like throwing and running. So I feel like we stop the run and make them uncomfortable in throwing. I feel like it's going to be a pretty good game for us. All right, Amari, thank you. Good luck this week. All right, appreciate you. Includes our player interviews portion of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. When we return, we will have more. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. 
Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back to Rams Stadium as we continue here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll now get into our keys to the game, brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. Travis, start with Shippensburg and give us your keys for them. First, looking at the Shippensburg Raiders, first order of business, they're going to have to protect the quarterback. We've talked about how that's been kind of a revolving door so far this season, and you don't want that thing to start spinning today. So what you want to do is have whoever the quarterback's going to be, you want them to be able to stand upright, be able to step into their throws, and you don't want them getting chased around all day, so they have to protect the quarterback. Also, they're going to want big plays on special teams. We mentioned how they've had their struggles as far as putting up points on the offensive side of the ball, so that brings up the man, Red Douglas. He was named Named all PSAC second team last year, a very dangerous return man, so he could be the key that's going to help open up those special teams big plays for the Raiders. Also, on the defensive side of the ball for the Raiders, they must win on first down versus the run. They want to try to make Shepard one-dimensional, and that's just going to make your job easier on defense when you're able to box in that Shepard offense and put them in predictable down and distance situations. And a little bit more on that defensive side of the ball, they're going to have to rally and tackle well in space. Most teams have chose to play off, keep everything in front of them. So what you want to do is try to limit those yards after catch. Looking over at Shepard, you want to look at things on the offensive side of the ball. First and foremost, you got to get Jeremiah and Taylor involved. Last week came away with zero touches. He's too talented of a player, too explosive of an athlete for him not to be heavily involved in the offensive game plan. you got to get him the ball in a variety of ways, not just going down the field, maybe some jet sweeps, something simple just to get him the ball in his hand so he's able to make some plays. Also, Shepard, you've got to protect the football. Saw last week that when you put the ball on the turf or you're turning the ball over, it's going to be very tough for you to get anything sustained on the offensive side of the ball, and you don't want to put any more pressure on that defense, keeping them out there on the field by turning the ball over. Also for their Shepard offense, you want to establish the play-action pass. So that means you're going to have to be able to run the ball effectively. And, again, that goes back to my previous point. you got to protect the ball. If you're able to protect the ball, you're going to be able to run the ball more. And also for Shepard, continued big plays on special teams. Now, last week didn't get a touchdown, but Greer was able to get a big punt return and put that Shepard offense in good position. They weren't able to capitalize on it, but I just think this the continued evolution of the Shepard Rams special teams unit. They've been making plays all year long, and they're going to need those big plays today if they want to come away with a big win versus the Shippensburg Raiders. Let's go ahead and take a minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll have kickoff here from Rams Stadium. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. Hello. 
we're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? Bechtel Jewelers. Look. Can mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. We welcome you back to Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Shepherd taking on Shippensburg here at Ram Stadium on the campus of Shepherd University. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us as we get into our opening kickoff here, brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. Travis, any final thoughts heading into this one as we look at this matchup? Well, one big name that the Shippensburg Raiders offense is going to be missing today is going to be running back and also long snapper Jake DeLuca, number 41, the six foot one, 210 pound junior. One of their better all around offensive weapons this year. Only played in three games, but has 85 yards rushing, a touchdown, also has nine catches for 167 yards and a touchdown. So just a versatile piece on the offensive side of the ball that won't be available for the Raiders today. Shepard will receive the opening kickoff, moving from the Boone Fieldhouse toward the new scoreboard end zone. But the new scoreboard not quite working yet here at Ram Stadium, but certainly looks nice. So hopefully they can get it up and running before the end of the season. As Shippensburg will kick it away back deep for the Rams, Malachi Brown and Christian McDowell standing at the Rams' five-yard line. And to kick it off for Shippensburg will be Jackson Montross. Montross puts it on the tee. And we are just about underway from Ram Stadium. A beautiful day here in Shepherdstown after the rain last week. Partly cloudy skies and sunny. Feels like September. Well, I guess it still is September, but heading into October. And going back deep for the Rams is Christian McDowell. McDowell fielding it and has a hole. McDowell across the 30. McDowell across the 40. Flag comes in as McDowell is brought down at midfield by Nazir Greer. Looks like that holding is going to be on number 34. Brody Carroll, he certainly got his money's worth, the six foot one, 220 pound freshman. And in the man's collar on that one. He wasn't messing around in that holding. If he's going to get hit for holding, he's going to earn it. Usually it's going to be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Look like that for holding happened right around the 35. But still, the Rams offense should be setting up in pretty good field position to start today's football game. Yeah, not bad. Obviously, you would have liked to have the kickoff return yardage, but without the holding, you might not have gotten out that far. Okay, so we got two flags on the play of holding against Shepard. And an unnecessary roughness against Shippensburg. And that ref has a has a nice mic voice, doesn't he? Sounds That's good good on the radio. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Got to be careful. He might try to take our job. <laughs> but the ball to the 40-yard line, so still great field position after the holding and the unsportsmanlike. At least they didn't do the dance where they marked off the holding penalty. Yeah, I hate like, when they do yeah, that. I'm like, come on now. I'm like, well, we, 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 can, we, <laughs> we can do we can that do math. math. <laughs> <laughs> we trust you. Malachi Brown is the running back. Two receivers to the far side, and Cam Dorner, the receiver to the near side, as Morgan takes the snap, throws, tipped at the line, and incomplete. Coming up and knocking it down was Jacoby Sherrard. 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 The D lineman as he knocks it away and pass falls incomplete and that's something that this Raiders defense has done very well so far this year 
are breaking up passes. Those defensive linemen, they may not beat you on that initial rush, but they're doing a good job of getting their hands up. And what that's going to do, that's going to help. I mean, what that's going to do is hurt that quick passing game where the ball's going to come out a little bit lower. Brown gets the carry, goes up the middle, finds about a yard or two on the play. Brought down by Garrett David and Javon Cruz on on that tackle as well. So it'll be a third and long for the Rams, third and about eight from their own 42-yard line. And that's tough when you come out passing on first down and you come up short. They put you in a second and long. You're kind of boxed in. You're forced to run, and now you're going up against a stout defense on the third and long situation here early on in the game. No backs in the backfield. Morgan has time. Now steps up and is brought down on the sack by Jeremiah Carthers, the redshirt sophomore. And again, that was more of a coverage sack. The Rams coming out in a five-wide look, and Carruthers just able to collapse the pocket. He's a bigger defensive tackle. The redshirt sophomore, six foot, 310 pounds, and he used every ounce of it on that play when he was able just to maintain his spot on the field. And then as the quarterback tried to step up in the pocket, able to come up and bring the quarterback down. Loss of about one on the play. It'll be fourth and nine. Shepard will punt it. And a fair catch singled for it around the 11-yard line. Shippensburg coming out now for their first offensive possession. Should be interesting to see who the quarterback is. As we know, listed on the two deep as the starter is Sam Stoner. I did see Sam Johnson the third warming up before the game. Joey McCracken, who was their starter to begin the season, is out. And it looks like it will be Stoner jogging onto the field to begin things for Shippensburg. Stoner is the son of Russ Stoner, who's the head coach at William Penn High School, also known as York High. First down and 10 for Stoner in the gun. And he'll hand it off here on first down and not much room. Shepard doing, doing a good job of stringing it out. It's like Pena was in on the tackle. Very stout defender in the box. Looks like Tanner Hess was the running back on that play. The 5'10", 185-pound redshirt sophomore coming off of a very good game last week. 26 carries for 100 yards, averaging 3.8 yards per carry. Had a touchdown. Also had three catches for 31 yards in last week's game where yards were hard to come by for both ball clubs. Yeah, 7-0 win for Shippensburg a week ago as... Stoner will throw here on second and long. He steps up, throws it high and incomplete, intended for Bryant. Broken up by Naeem Alexander. It'll be third and long now for the Raiders, third and 11 from their own 11. Alexander just doing a good job because it looked like the wide receiver had a chance to bring that ball in, but just a stuff, just a tough hit on the play, was able to break that pass up. So third down and 11 from their own 11 for the Raiders. Stoner takes the snap, rolls to the right, has Kowser providing pressure, has a lot of room to run here on the near sideline, but he'll dip out of bounds short of the first down marker as running him out there was JT Komoyao. And Stoner made the smart decision to not turn it <laughs> upfield. It looked like Stoner, he was thinking about it for a minute, and he saw the way Komiyao was able to close that distance and thought Weiser lived to fight another day. We mentioned Stoner playing his football at William Penn High School. He left as the program's all-time leading passer with over 5,000 passing yards. He also had 66 touchdowns through the air and 11 touchdowns on the ground, so very productive high school player. Shepard nearly getting a block on the punt. Miles Greer will field it at the 39. Greer sheds off one tackler. Gets a block and is going to be brought down around midfield. So great field position again for Shepard. Can they take advantage of it? 12 minutes to go in this first quarter. No score between the two teams. And good coverage that time by the Raiders because it looked like Greer had a lot of open space over there on that home sideline. But the Raider coverage team able to quickly adjust and cut him off and limit him to just a a couple yards on the play, which could potentially have been a much bigger play. I think we have a flag on the play. And it may be 
roughing or running into the kicker, which would be. I believe it's that roughing the center. Roughing the center, so they made contact with the long snapper, which now brings up a first down for Shippensburg. So that was quite the change of events. It looked like Shepard was going to have the ball in Shippensburg territory at the 49. Instead, the Raiders get a free first down due to a rare special teams mistake this season from the Rams special teams unit. And again, this Rams defense finds itself in a difficult situation. They went out there, did their job, had a three and out, but then again, a, a mistake on special teams costs them and gives a fresh set of downs to this Raiders offense. Nice cutback by Hess. He's got a lane and a first down before he's knocked out of bounds by Dante Harrison here on the sideline. Good run from Seth Hess. I realized everything was going to be jammed up to the play side. He initially wanted to run it off the right side. Behind that big right tackle, now our Chirichi decided to cut it back and pick up a good gain on that play. It's now first down and 10 from the Raiders' 48-yard line. Stoner adjusting at the line of scrimmage. And now comes set. The run or play action, good fake from Stoner. He gets outside, oh, but good brought down Amari, Amari Terry. Terry with the sack. Doing double duty on that play. Not only was he supplying pressure, but the Raiders tried to slip that fullback, excuse me, the tight end underneath. Terry did just enough to slow him down without getting the defensive holding penalty and then was able to call his own number, get back there to the quarterback and take him down. An outstanding all-around play that time by Amar Terry. He's been great. Him and Onelio Pena with their ability to move around, play a lot of different positions in this defense, really helps Shepard with the speed. And Terry has been physical enough, despite his size, to make plays in the backfield like he did on that one. Second and 14 now for the Raiders. Stoner looking to throw. Under some pressure, throws over the middle complete to Roof. Short of the sticks, it will bring up a third down and long. And Roof, that's only his third catch so far this season but if you think back to last year when the Rams played the Raiders had one big catch 57 yards and a touchdown so he is a player that you're going to have to keep an eye on because he has that big play potential in his arsenal. Five yard pickup brings up third down and nine from the 49 yard line for Shippensburg still no score 10 minutes to go in the opening quarter between the Rams and the Raiders Stoner Throws a bullet over the middle, complete for a first down. Shippensburg hauled in on the play by Red Douglas, a guy that we remember from last season, had some big plays in the special teams, as you mentioned, Travis, a solid wide receiver returning for this Raiders team. You mentioned that last game he had versus Shepard, six catches, 57 yards, also had two kick returns for 57 yards, and also a punt return on the day, so he is a player that can hurt you in a variety of ways. Big throw there from Stoner. First down and 10 now from the 35-yard line. Play action, a throw over the middle intended for Bryant and incomplete Good coverage on the play by, by McDowell. Christian McDowell. I know the Shippensburg fans wanted a pass interference on that play, but... To me, that was just good defense. Both of those players have a right to make a play on the ball. McDowell did just enough to nudge the wide receiver off of his initial route, and then after that was able to make a play on the ball without initiating any additional contact on that play. Good all-around defense, and not to get that defensive pass interference. Yeah, I think that was a good no call there. I thought pretty good coverage from McDowell. Second down and 10 from the 35. Stoner looking to throw. Screen pass underneath. Complete to Douglas. Douglas tackled short of the first down marker will bring up a third down and about three for Shippensburg after a seven yard pickup and it looked like initially that uh, the Shepard Rams defense was right there Johnny on the spot to make the play but hats off to that Raiders offensive line right guard Riley Curtin and now our Churchy able to get downfield make some key blocks and open up some space for the wide receiver so third and three from the 28 Hess remains the back to the right of Stoner who takes the snap. Stoner throws, complete on the far side for a first down to Douglas. Douglas brought down on the play by J.T. Comayal. 
and Harold O'Neill. It'll be another first down for the Raiders. So this drive was extended on the roughing the center penalty, and now Shippensburg moving the ball well down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line goes the Raiders. And the freshman quarterback has looked very comfortable here on this drive after getting those fresh set of downs, has really settled into a groove, mixing run with the pass, and just very stout in the pocket. Again, 5'11", 210 pounds. So he's kind of like a little tree trunk out there. The run Hess up the middle. Gain of about one on the play. Kevin Kowser coming in to make the tackle. The second and nine for the Raiders. Stoner spent some time at WVU. I don't know if it was for football, but he was there in the spring. And then he ended up transferring into Shippensburg. So not certain if he was trying to walk on at West Virginia or what the case was, but I don't blame him. Go somewhere where you can play. If you got a chance to walk out on the field your freshman year, then, then that's a good option for you. Second and nine now from the 19-yard line. Stoner looking to throw under some pressure, and he is sacked. Brought down on the play by Daniel McPherson. First time we've called his name this season. He coming up. He comes up with the sack. Good, a great blitz right up the middle. You want to get that young quarterback off of his platform back there in the pocket, force him to move. And that time the Rams defense able to quickly swarm. And again, like we mentioned, you can see this defense. They're, they're tinkering with pieces up front. Not sure, or, you know, the combinations that they want to use in certain situations. But you can see them starting to get dialed in more and more week after week. And that time, again, showing that they're able to get pressure with their front four by showing a variety of looks. Third and 13 from the 23, Stoner. Under pressure and brought Baxter. down again. Jack Baxter coming up with the huge sack. And now it's decision-making time for the Raiders. They're going to run on the field goal unit. This would be a long attempt. But we do know that Jackson Montross has been their kicker for at least a few seasons here. So he has experience. This will be about a 45-yard field goal. And again, nothing fancy so far. This Rams defense having success getting in the backfield on that last play, just rushing forward, just a straight bull rush, was able to collapse the pocket and come up with the sack and forcing them to kick a long field goal. Fourth and 18, the 45-yarder is good. And Shippensburg takes the early 3-0 lead here with 5.53 to go in this first quarter. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. We welcome you back here to Rams Stadium. Shippensburg three, Shepard nothing here in this first quarter. So a penalty going against the Rams special teams unit after Shepard forced what looked like a three and out. On fourth down, they get a running into the center call. That extends the drive, and Shippensburg gets into field goal range, nails a 45-yarder for Montrose. Our scoring drive summaries are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Back to return is Christian McDowell out of his own end zone, and he's going to take it out. McDowell across the 15 and gets out to about the 20-yard line. Tackle on the play by Isaiah, Isaiah Gilmore. And that will send up a first down and 10 for the Shepard offense. So Shepard thought it was going to have great field position, Travis. Unfortunately, the penalty going against the Rams. So Shippensburg drives its way down, and they take advantage of that penalty. And it may be something where the Shippensburg coaching staff went to the referees before and asking them to keep an eye on that because right now the Raiders are working with their backup long snapper. Like we mentioned, DeLucha, he's out. So you don't have a lot of long snappers on your roster. That, are, that is a very unique skill. So you want to make sure you protect the guys that you do have out there doing a good job. Malachi Brown gets the carry, gets it up to about the 23-yard line before he's brought down. Actually only going to give him a two-yard gain on the play. So second down and eight. 
But, again, that keeps your offense on schedule. Even though it may not be a big, flashy run to get you a chunk of yards, it keeps your offense on schedule. You could run it again and set yourself up for a third and short, but it just gives you options when you don't come away with nothing, when you come away with nothing on first down. They run again, and Brown gets more yardage here. It will be third down and short. Malachi Green getting it out to about the 26-yard line. Four-yard pickup should be a third and four for Shepard. Third and four, and now now you have options. Now you can either, you know, if you want to gamble, possibly run the ball again. Third and four, that's not unheard of. Or you could go for a short, high-percentage pass to pick up that first down. And something I think the Rams need to start doing a little bit more is attacking teams down the seam and over the middle that's going to open up some of those passes to the sidelines later on in the game. Raiders show blitz. They only bring four. Morgan throws to the outside and incomplete. Intended for Jeremiah Taylor. Breaking it up on the play was D.J. Jackson. Rams go three and out. They'll be forced to punt. It looked like it may have been a miscommunication between the quarterback and the wide receiver as Taylor was continuing on the go route where it looked like Seth Morgan was expecting more of a comeback on that play. So those two are certainly going to have to get on the same page because that play almost resulted in a turnover. Ryan Barrick will kick it away for the Rams. Your trail, Shippensburg, 3-0 here in this first quarter. Barrick with a high punt. Fair caught at around the 35-yard line. And that's where the Raiders offense will take back over. Our first quarter presented to you on TV10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. As well as the Skinner Law Firm, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers representing Accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. So ball on the 35 here for the Raiders offense. First down and 10 for Sam Stoner in Shippensburg. Stoner and hand it off to Hess. Hess has a big hole on the outside. Flag comes flying in. He's driven out of bounds around midfield by J.T. Comial. But with the flag in the backfield, this is most likely coming back. Holding call going against the Raiders. Didn't quite hear the number, but... And another good run that time by Hessen. He's making the most of his opportunity. Appeared in seven games last year, but primarily on special teams where he's able to rack up two tackles during the course of the season. But now he is the starting running back for this Raiders offense and has just been a steady workhorse for the Raiders so far this season. First and first and 20 now from the 25-yard line for the Raiders after the 10-yard penalty. Stoner looking to throw under some pressure. Throws the outside, dropped by Douglas on that outside, covered by Dante Harrison. You can tell Douglas, second and twenty. Douglas was already thinking about making that move to pick up some more yards before securing the catch. Not too often, you'll see that PSAC award winner put balls on the turf. Douglas moving from right to or from left to right, excuse me. Brian and him are the receivers, or two of the receivers here to the near, near side. Roof, the other one, and Hess is in the backfield to the right of Stoner. Second down and 20. Stoner steps up, throws a high pass intended for Douglas and out of bounds and incomplete. Good coverage on the play from Christian McDowell, and now a flag comes in. McDowell's going to be flagged for taunting, I believe. Might have said something to the Shippensburg sideline after he broke up that play. And again, we mentioned these, these sidelines, it's not a lot of space to move around, so certainly see how things can get chippy and escalate quickly. So the referee is just looking to take control early on. But again, penalties are playing a huge factor in how the game is shaping up so far. Got to maintain that composure. And you don't want to give an offense that's beginning to get a little bit more confidence. You don't want to give them a fresh set of downs. And, again, the defense has to stay out there that much longer. You had them backed up when they had the holding penalty on first down. They were likely going to be forced possibly to punt on that play. But you get that 
personal foul, fresh set of downs. And on that previous drive, they were able to parlay that into a field goal to take the early lead. Yeah, it's going to be third and 20. Instead, it's a first and 10 for Shippensburg. Hess running the ball, gets a big hole up the middle, but stumbles and is brought down at around the 47-yard line. 49, excuse me. So about a yard short of the first down. It'll be second down and one. The Raiders looking to take advantage of that speed on the Shepard defense, doing a counter on that play, using a little bit of misdirection to try to take advantage of that quick first step, possibly get those Rams defenders out of position. And the offensive line able to do a good job of creating some space right down the middle of the field and has able to do the rest. 3.20 or three minutes to go in this first quarter. Stoner looking to throw, throws over the middle and incomplete, and a flag comes in intended for Bryant. On that outside, looked like he was tangled up with Jaleel Singleton. Singleton, the 5'11", 163-pound sophomore from White Plains, Maryland. And that was just an awkward play. I think the quarterback just made a savvy play by just throwing the ball in that general direction and hoping that he got a flag. Yeah. And so, it worked out. Yeah. So penalties killing the Rams here in this first quarter. Three minutes to go. It's first down and 10 for the Raiders again. And again, a first down given to them instead of them earning it. With Shepard giving up too many penalties. And again, this Rams defense is just having to stay out on the field for so long. We mentioned it's a warm day out there, even warmer down there in the turf. And just when you have that type of ball control type of mentality on the opposing offense, it just puts a lot of pressure on that defense to try to maintain throughout four quarters of football. First and 10 from the 45, the Raiders adjusting at the line of scrimmage as Stoner. Sends the back in motion, throws over the middle. Incomplete, broken up on the play by by Anilio Pena. Pass was a little bit behind the wide receiver, just allowing just enough time for Pena to get in there. And again, we talked about just the versatility. We talked about Amari Terry, Anilio Pena able to make plays in the box, in coverage, just an all-around football player, very aggressive, and he's usually always going to be around the football. Looked like Bryce was the intended receiver on that play. We'll bring up a second and ten now for Shippensburg. New running back in the game as well. That is Neely. Onassis Neely, the grad student transfer coming over from Temple. And Neely gets a good run but takes a shot at around the... 37-yard line before he's brought down short of the sticks. It'll be third and manageable. Not third and four. Nearly a nice change of pace from Hess. Nearly a bit bigger. 5'11", 215 pounds. Excellent size for a running back and very tough for a defender to bring him down with just an arm tackle. To get to the 35 for a first down. They throw incomplete, intended for Douglas on the near side. Dante Harrison in coverage, and it'll be fourth down. But they are going to probably stay on. (laughs) And Harrison let the young quarterback know, I was this close to picking that one off. That would have been bad news for the Raiders offense if Harrison was able to keep his feet on that play. But Harrison has been the epitome of what this Shepard Rams defense has been all year. Bend but don't break. Made a big play to really seal that game versus Cal PA after the secondary had such a long, difficult day. He was able to get the interception late in the game that really swung the outcome of the game in favor of Shepard University. So fourth down and three. Shippensburg is going to go for it. Stoner in the gun. Three receivers to the far side, one-on-one to the near side. Throw over the middle and incomplete. No flags on the play. Shepard will take over on the turnover on downs. And a lot of questioning looks by the wide receivers that time by the Raiders. A little bit of miscommunication on that play. A lot of wide receivers in the same area, so you know there was some type of breakdown somewhere along the way, forcing the quarterback to go to the other side of the field, and the Rams defense able to rise to the challenge and put this Rams offense in pretty good field position. Let's see if they can string some plays together and give that defense a chance to get some Gatorade, make some adjustments, and just catch their breath. They've been out there a long time already in today's game. 3 nothing. Shippensburg on top of Shepard, Travis. It seems like the Rams a little bit out of sync early on offensively. See what they can do on this drive. First down and 10 from their own 38-yard line. 
Morgan looks to throw, throws underneath to Hill. Hill has some room on that far side. There goes Barry Hill into Shippensburg territory. Flag comes flying in, though, at the 40-yard line. Cameron Dorner might have got hit with a hold or a block in the back on that one. I believe it's going to be a hold, that quick screen. And Dorner, to me, it looked like it was a pretty good block. The defender just kind of ran him over and basically tripped over his carcass, and the referee's going to call him for a holding on that play. Again, the referee's going to have a bit better view on that one, so maybe Dorner got a little bit too much cloth in his hands and pulled the defender down on top of him right to open up hill to get out on the sideline but i believe those type of quick plays like that are going to be something that this rams offense are going to need it's going to be an extension of the running game try to pick up some easy yards and it's going to be tough when you're out there trying to attack on the edge you run the risk of getting those holding penalties because you're right there out there in front of the ref it's not like an offensive line where you're down in the trenches that kind of covered up the referees can't get a clearer look when you're out there on the edge you're right in front of the referees and a lot of times you're going to get those type of penalties morgan looking to throw under some time throwing to the outside and caught by jeremiah taylor and around the 45-yard line. It will be short first down, but a big play there on second and 19. Great they pass bring up protection. third and manageable. Great pass protection that time by the Rams O-line. Now it looks like the Rams offense trying to go tempo. That's something when your offense is, is struggling to get into a rhythm. Sometimes if you speed it up, try to implement your two-minute drill, sometimes that can get you into a rhythm and pick up some easy yards where everything isn't a life-and-death struggle to pick up that first down. So even though it looked like he was about a yard short, they give him the first down. First down and 10 now. Shepard from the 48-yard line of or their own 48. Morgan throwing far side incomplete intended for Cameron Dorner. Pass sails out of bounds. And pressure up front. There was a good push by that Raiders defensive front. And Morgan not able to step into that throw. And we've noted throughout the course of this season so far is that his passes have a tendency to sail when he's going to the sideline. He's much more of a strong arm, accurate quarterback in between the hashes as opposed to the sidelines. And sometimes that can be dangerous when those passes start to drift when you're going to the sideline. Second and 10 now from the 48. Morgan takes the snap, throws underneath, complete to Nazir Russell. Russell gets brought down around the 40-yard line. That will move the chains for another first down, Shepard. And Shepard moving the ball into Shippensburg territory for the first time today. And and Russell is a guy that this Rams offense, they're going to need more out of him. And what it looks like to me so far, it's almost like stage fright. When he gets out there on the field, he runs really tight. He's playing not to make a mistake. He has the athleticism. He needs to trust the work that he's put in to prepare himself to, to get these opportunities. Go out there, cut it loose, let your hair down, and swing for the fences. Don't go out there worrying about making a mistake because you're playing tight and you're just not able to make the plays that you're physically capable of making. First and 10 from the 40. Morgan looking to throw. Throws underneath to Russell. Russell has some room to run. Russell inside the 20 to the 10. Russell all the way down inside the five-yard line before he's brought down on the play. That's exactly what you're talking about, Travis. And I think a lot of that has to do with Opportunities have been given when Malachi makes a mistake, so then he doesn't want to make a mistake. But here he's getting opportunities, just part of the rotation, and he's making plays. Absolutely, and that's something that, that, that Morgan has excelled at this year are those off-schedule plays where he's able to use those check-down wide receivers. That's something that he does very well, and that time those two able to help each other out, that being Morgan and Russell. Russell remains the back here on first and goal from the four, and they'll feed him. Russell getting some good blocking, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. Nazia Russell takes it in from four yards out, and the Rams take the early 6-3 to three lead on the last play of the first quarter. And sometimes that's all you need. You need that one play that's going to allow you to let all that stress out, take that deep breath, and realize that you can make plays on this level of football. And Russell just doing a good job bringing it all together on that drive. He did a pass blocking. He did a pass catching. And that time he did it running with a tough, hard run in between the tackles down there to get the touchdown. The extra point from James Bozick is good. And Shepard extends its lead to 7-3. We do have a flag on the play. Looks like it will go on the kickoff. So let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. Our score, Shepard 7 Shippensburg 
three. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We'll be back after this. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. Like, like. We welcome you back here to Rams Stadium. 6-3 to three is what they're showing on the scoreboard, but I thought they, they singled it as good, so it should be 7-3, to three, and that's now corrected here as uh, we head into the second quarter. Shepard 7, Shippensburg 3. Rams able to punch it in. Some good plays from Nazir Russell on that drive. Taking, uh, I guess, or Shepard had some penalties, and they uh, recover from those penalties with some good pass plays, and Nazir Russell takes it in from four yards out. Our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Shepard will kick it away here. Bozick putting it on the tee. Going back for the Raiders is Douglas and Roof to begin this second quarter. So good drive there from Shepard, and that was good to see, Travis, after some of the early mistakes and just not looking like the Rams' offense that we saw against Cal. And, again, we talked about Russell playing tight. It just seems the way that, that that's how the offense has come out the past couple of weeks. They're playing tight, playing not to make a mistake. You can't play the game of football that way. you got to go out there, trust the work that you've put in, and really just swing for the fences once you get out there on the field. And, again, we saw one of the biggest strengths of Seth Morgan's game when he's able to make those off-schedule throws, taking those check downs, working over the middle of the field, and that's going to loosen up things for the run game when you're able to get those type of plays where somebody's going to break off their route, get to an open space, and trust that Morgan's going to keep his eyes downfield and be able to make those accurate throws over the middle. So the Rams just, again, you can see them tinkering much like on defense, just trying to dial it in and see what their identity is in this season moving forward. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Stoner looking to throw under some heat. Rolls away, but is brought down by Matt Bednarski. Cows are also in there on the mix, and the Rams bringing the house on that play. We mentioned early on in the season having tremendous difficulty getting to the quarterback, but after that Cal PA game, it seems like they've been able to find a, a combination of different looks and defensive fronts that have really opened things up as far as getting pressure on the quarterback and that time, again, able to bring the quarterback down for a third time so far in today's contest. Well, Shepard defensive coordinator Josh Klein is going into the Shepard Hall of Fame today for a reason, Travis. He knows how to <laughs> dial up that blitz. <laughs> And they will run Hess off the far side. Gets it to about the 22-yard line. It will be third and long for the uh, Raiders. Hess running behind his big left tackle, Bryce Hampton, the six foot two, 300-pound redshirt junior. And Hess not quite able to get to the edge, and that's something that anybody's going to have difficulty doing consistently against his Rams defense. They are built with athletes and speed at pretty much every position, so getting to the edge consistently, that's going to be tough week in and week out against this unit. Third and 15 now for the Raiders here in the second quarter. 13-44 to go in the second. 7-3 Shepard. Stoner swings one over the Ooh. middle and a big hit from Anilio Pena and a flag comes in. Christian McDowell goes down. This might be targeting. If that results in an ejection, that's going to be a huge loss for that Rams defense. It depends on how they. And again, it roll wasn't it. like it, and it wasn't like Pena was leading with his helmet. He tried to turn and use his shoulder, but he went up high right. and wind up hitting the wide receiver in his helmet. Either way, it's going to result in a penalty, and fingers crossed that it won't be showers for Pena. Any hit to the head results in targeting. Even if you're leading with the shoulder or your head, it used to be you're allowed to go with your shoulder to the head, but then that obviously has changed in the last 10 years or so. So it's any hit to the head uh, or neck area, and that was definitely 
you know, hit to the head or neck area. I guess the only argument could be was the receiver going low to make the catch and then Pena stayed high. Maybe in that case you would not rule targeting, but still rule, or at least not the targeting to kick him out. So the referee's right now deliberating. Talking about it, it's usually a good sign. <laughs> no foul, wow. That's shocking, but Shepard will certainly take it. I went no foul. That's going to be my one of my nominees for collision of the game. Nelio Pena breaking up that pass early on here in the second quarter. Well, I felt like if they were talking about it, then they may make a change in their minds, and, and that is what happens here as it will be third and long for the Raiders. Backed up at their own 20. I thought it was fourth down. And, again, it is a bit unusual. A lot of times, you know, the PSAC officials, when it comes to uh, pass plays in the secondary and stuff like that, they'll let those young men play football. They try not to get involved too much, but we've seen over the past couple of weeks the referees have not been shy and throwing a lot of laundry on the field, and it just just disrupts the, the, the flow of the game. But a good no call that time is Payne just not being penalized for making a good hard-nosed football play to force a third long. It is fourth down. Well, it's bringing up a fourth down. Yes. I thought it was third, fourth down, but the officials hadn't changed it yet, and now the Shippensburg punt unit does run on here for fourth and 15. So a huge play by Neelia Pena to break that one up. And now Shippensburg will kick it from its own 20-yard line. It's possible that he didn't make contact with the head, and that results in the punt here, 13-35 to go. In this first half, 7-3 Shepard. Montrose will punt it away. High snap. Shepard gets the pressure. They get the block. Ball is rolling into the end zone. It will roll out of the end zone for a safety. And, again, this Rams special teams, they've been playing their tails off all season long. Early on in the year, it was big returns. That time, a huge punt block. They brought the house on that one, and just the Raiders did not have enough people back to protect the punter. And I don't even know who you called a block on that one. It was three or four Rams that could have been the man that got the hand on the ball. But, again, this Rams special teams unit has been red hot so far this season. So Shepard gets the safety to make it 9-3 to three with 13.26 to go in this first half, and they will now get the kick return as well. So a great opportunity for Shepard to break this game open a little bit, separate themselves from the Raiders. And a huge play there from the Rams special team all season. Coach Luke Wright in that special teams unit making plays consistently for Shepard. 9-3 to three our score, 13-26 to go in this first half, Travis. And that's something critical for this Rams team to have success today. You know you're going up against a ball club that's been struggling this year. They're coming in, they're 1-3, and three, and what do you want to do to try to take away the game from a team that's been struggling? You don't want to give them confidence early, so if you're able to jump on them early and pose your will, maybe you put some doubts in their head and you could see them start to tighten up a little bit as the game begins to wear on. So the Rams getting off to a hot start, something that they needed after the tough loss last week. So the home crowd is fired up. You're going to take this Shippensburg crowd out, which traveled very well. It's a lot of Shippensburg fans in the stands today. So you want to take them out of the green, and most importantly, you want to snatch that heart out of the Raiders' sidelines and kick, take them out of the game quickly. So Shepard will go back to return this kick. It is Brown. I think Cam Dorner, Cam Dorner back there as well. So Shepard looking for a spark from its special teams is on the uh, safety. They'll kick it from the 20, and instead of going for the punt, they'll go for the kick off the tee from the 20-yard line. 9-3 Shepard, Montrose's kick. Ends up in the hands of Cam Dorner, but he muffed it, picks it up off the turf and around the... 16, Dorner has a lane to the outside. Cam Dorner across the 40 and out of bounds. Around the 38-yard line, and that's where Shepard will take over. First down and 10. And Dorner has been quite a threat on special teams this year. Already has a kickoff return for a touchdown. And coming into today's contest, four kick returns for 156 yards. So he is dangerous 
no matter his role on the football field, whether it be as a wide receiver or a kick returner. Our second quarter presented to you on TV10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg or Total Insurance Solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. Morgan going play action and looking deep under pressure and brought down for the sack. Cleaning it up there. Jacoby Sherrard in. Sherrard. Sherrard coming back off of injury last year in 2021. Sherrard was named All PSAC East second team, but last year only limited to one game. But in that one game, he had six tackles, two of those solo, and also a tackle for loss. You go back to that 2021 season, and you see why he was able to earn those PSAC honors: 29 tackles, 18 of those solo, nine and a half tackles for loss, and six and a half sacks included that, including a forced fumble. Morgan under pressure again and brought down again. Coming in off the edge was... Looks like Garrett David was the defender coming in. The 6'3", 225-pound redshirt sophomore from Mansfield, PA. You see in this Raiders defense... Bringing in a variety of players up front, just trying to give different looks and keep those young men fresh throughout the game. But the Raiders' defense very stout in the middle with those big defensive tackles. Third down and 25 for Shepard after the six-yard loss on the sack. Morgan trying to throw it quickly to Barry Hill, and Hill sheds off one man. Still going, but now brought down at around the 32-yard line. So Shepard... Goes three and out, and a good response from the Shippensburg defense, getting a pair of sacks, slowing down the Rams' drive, and now forcing a punt. Not too bad after the safety. Absolutely, because the, the momentum was swinging majorly in favor of the Rams, and for the defense able to go out there and get a big stop. And Hill, again, the beneficiary of a good block by Dorner. Dorner didn't get the penalty on that play, but then Hill just not able to get enough on that third and long. The Gregorio going back to return it. Shins off one man and gets about out to the 37-yard line. So we'll see the Shippensburg offense here once again in a 9-3 game in favor of the Rams. 11.06 to go in this first half. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer. Matt and Daryl Miller, our cameramen. And back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin. You'll hear from Colin at halftime with a halftime scoreboard update. As the run Hess, and Hess is swallowed up by Richie Aguilar in the backfield. Loss of about two on the play will bring up second and 12. And the Raiders trying to go back to that counter, but... Again, that Rams defense is so tough. They're so good at getting penetration up front. So you may be able to get them with that once or twice during the course of the game, but the Raiders just going back to the well once too often as Aguilar was able to collapse that edge and get into the backfield and bring down Hess to set up a second and 12. Second and 12 for Stoner and the Raiders. The lefty slings one high but complete to... Bryce, Kareem Bryce coming up and making the catch. The five foot nine freshman. Short of the sticks will be third down for Ship. Third and about two. Stoner just looking very comfortable out there on the field. I know they prefer McCracken. They've also have Sam Johnson the third, but as the old line goes, you never want to take yourself out of the huddle because you don't know who's going in for you. And right now, Stoner making the most of his opportunity. The run Hess, and he is brought down in the backfield. Harold O'Neill leading the charge for Shepard. And that will make a decision for Ship. I think they're going to punt on fourth and two. And O'Neill just getting into the backfield, wreaking havoc. It looked like it was going to be a choice of the quarterback. He could either give it or keep it, but O'Neill played it in such a way where there was no right decision. He was going to tackle whoever had the ball anyway. He was able to bring down the ball carrier on that play. Stoner saying he don't want any parts of that. He's giving that ball up. Fourth and two from the 46-yard line, and Shippensburg will be back or will be forced to punt. 
Going back deep for the Rams is Miles Greer. Who already has a punt return touchdown on the season. Greer will fair catch this one at around the 16, 17-yard line. 8.54 to go in this first half. 9-3 our score, Shepard on top of Shippensburg. And we've seen Jackson Montrose go out and punt a couple of times so far today for Shippensburg, and he has done a good job of getting those high hanging punts, and that limits the return capabilities for Miles Greer. We know he's dangerous and, and can take it to the house anytime he gets his hand on the ball. So good special teams play that time by the Raiders, just taking away that ability for Greer to make a play on the ball. So Shepard offense coming out of a three and out. Morgan under Ooh. pressure again and brought down again. Sherrard coming in and coming off the edge was Terrence Peterson for the sack. So the Rams now giving up a lot of sacks, and I think they need to maybe go back to that ground game as Shippensburg seems to be unleashing the blitz on Shepard. And, and just short up, shorten up your pass routes because you're having to hold on to the ball longer. If you're sending those wide receivers into deep routes, you need to let things develop. Shorten up those pass routes so the quarterback can get rid of the ball quickly. Morgan this time does get it away quickly to Barry Hill. Hill brought down on the play by Gilmore. And again, a RPO action. It's more of a play action pass, the way the Shepherd Rams offensive unit likes to use it. But a quick pass, the ball's out of the hands of the quarterback, and they're attacking over the middle of the field. There was a void of defenders in the middle of the field. That's easy pitch and catch. If the defense is going to give you those type of plays, take them. Make it easy on yourself. Hill again on the catch, finding an open spot over the middle. Easy pitch and catch for the quarterback. The pressure had no chance of getting to the quarterback on that play. It is just to your benefit and short of the first down, so it looks like the punting unit is going to have to come out. But those are the type of plays I think this Rams offense is really going to have to start incorporating. Don't I think make they it... gave them the first down. Oh, they gave actually. them the first. Okay. So first and ten for Shepard now. Take those plays. If the defense is going to keep giving you those plays over the middle, take them. They'll run Malachi and Brown running hard and gets it out to about the 45-yard line. Talking with Shepard center James Bell, he talked a lot about how impressed this offense has been with Malachi Brown working this week on his ball handling, doing all sorts of things with the ball. Uh, I think he was saying like a heavy ball at times and just trying to work on it. And I think he's won over the the team in terms of he's going to work on his mistakes to get better and and continue to help this team win. Here's a pass complete to Brian Chester. Gets a good block, but they're going to throw a flag. If you can see the guy's back, don't touch it. Time Peterson was the player that got blocked in the back. He's tough to handle out there in space, particularly for a wide receiver. It looks like Will Ennis is going to be the guilty party on that play. So the block in the back could hurt what was a good drive going for Shepard Shepherd here as the I have to mark it off. This time, Travis, they will do your, your favorite move from the <laughs> officials. <laughs> they'll walk it back, then they'll move it up, then they'll walk it back. <laughs> like, really? Come on, guys. But you're starting to see this Rams offense. This is what Seth Morgan is good at. He's good at that play-action pass, getting outside of the pocket. He does a good job of keeping his eyes downfield and extending plays with his mobility. He's not a running threat downfield per se, but he does do a good job of getting outside of the pocket, extending plays, and taking those check-down routes. So it's going to be something where the Rams are just going to have to put more of an emphasis on those scramble drills of just guys getting to open space and trusting quarterbacks going to be able to find you. Morgan throws to Malachi Brown. He makes a man miss. Can be tackled just short of the first first down marker penalty actually wasn't that bad since it was a penalty that went back from where it occurred opposed to from the original line of scrimmage so it made it only a second and four it will now be about third and two and that was Ibrahim Cham coming up making that good open field tackle the 5'11 165 pound junior from Silver Spring Maryland 
Malachi Brown, the back to the right of Seth Morgan in a four wide receiver set. Third down for Morgan. He throws a lop pass for Cordell Batten, who leaped up with one hand, made a heck of a catch, but I think he was out of bounds. Another saying he got a foot in. First down, Shepard into Shippensburg territory to the 44. What a catch from Cordell Batten. Hauled it in with one hand and was able to tap a foot on that near sideline. And that's what the Rams have had success for. They're not going to be able to bomb it over the top. Seth Morgan, not a strong arm guy, but what he does do a good job of is throwing up those 50-50 balls and allowing his wide receivers to make plays on it. Morgan again throwing up and for grabs. Malachi Brown had to turn into a DB to knock it away from Javon Cruz. And remember, that was one of the interceptions that Morgan threw last year with the linebacker Wari from Cutstown. You mean last week? You know, I mean, excuse me, last week. Was able to make that play. Might have thrown one like that last yeah, year, though. too, at BMI for yeah. all we know. Yeah, he'd had a couple interceptions last year. Excuse me, last week versus Cutstown. Similar play, that swing route out of the backfield, try to lay it over the top. But well, these linebackers nowadays, they're used to making plays and coverage, and they can go up and get those footballs. Second down and 10, they'll run Malachi Brown, and Brown gets a good block from James Bell down to the 39-yard line. You had the matchup that you wanted, Malachi on a linebacker. Is a pretty good matchup considering also the fact that he's a former wide receiver. But Morgan underthrew it a little bit. Cruz nearly came out with the interception. Yeah, you, you certainly understand like the matchup that the Rams' offensive coordinator is trying to get. He wants to get Malachi Brown matched up on a linebacker out in space. And most of the time that's going to be to your favor. But, again, you need that throw that's over the top where you allow that player to run after the catch. You want to get it out in front of him a little bit. Brown seemed to overrun the play. Morgan making the best of it. Ball came out. Flag comes in. I don't think anybody had possession as it went out of bounds. Flag coming in, though, anyway. So this will back up the play. It would have been fourth down for Shepard as a miscommunication between Seth Morgan and Malachi Brown forced Morgan to try to run on the uh, breakdown play or the play breaking down. And that was good improvisation that time by Morgan. He he didn't hesitate, quickly made a decision, ran to pick up some yards, just wasn't able to hold on to the ball at the end. And going to be a holding on the play. And a lot of times when things go off schedule like that, particularly in the run game where they're expecting you to run in the middle and you bounce it outside, sometimes you're just going to induce those offensive linemen to go to holding penalty because they're trying to get inside leverage to create that space inside and when you bounce it outside and that defender tries to break contact to go after the ball carrier those offensive linemen they're going to be exposed and that's usually the result you're going to get a holding penalty nine to three shepherd with 422 to go in this second quarter big delay on this penalty i'm not certain what's going on but they'll now mark it off And they'll spot it at the 46-yard line. So Shepard backed up. A lot of penalties for both ball clubs so far today. Have to get to the 33 for a first down. Morgan throws over the middle. High and intercepted. Picked off by Isaiah Gilmore. A great diving play from Gilmore. Taylor slow to get up as he took a shot over the middle. And Shippensburg will take over the Raiders defense, gets another stop with 4.07 to go in this first half. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Shepard, first down and 10. Under some pressure and brought down by Jack Baxter. Another sack 
for Shepard on this draw or on this day. Anilio Pena coming in as well for the Rams, and that will back him up. So Shippensburg just not holding up against the Blitz at all, and that time a front D lineman and Baxter of his second sack of the day. The defense just doing a good job of mixing it up between four-man fronts, three-man fronts. When they go four-man fronts, they're either shifting right before the snap of the ball or using some type of twist or stunt that's really putting pressure on those offensive linemen because they're going to have to try to adjust their responsibilities on the fly, and so far that Rams defensive front has been able to take advantage. Six-yard loss on the play. It'll be second and 16. Stoner throwing deep down the far sideline and incomplete. Dante Harrison in coverage. Pass intended for Red Douglas with 3.17 to go in this first half. It's 9-3 to three Shepard, third down and 16. And this Rams defense has been doing a good job of winning on first down. Backing up this Raiders offense, they've had some success today, but not able to really come back once they get behind the chains. This is an offense that has struggled to score points and struggled to move the ball. So when you get behind the chains like that, puts even more pressure on that offensive unit. They just struggled all season, really, offensively, and it's third down and 16. And a timeout taken by the Raiders. Let's take a 30-second break. 9-3 to three our score, 317 to go in this first half. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. We welcome you back to Shepherdstown. Before we took that break, Travis, we mentioned some of the struggles of the Shippensburg offense this season, a team that has only scored 54 points all season, averages about 14 points a game, really haven't found any success on the ground, only about two yards per carry on the season or through the air. Obviously, they've had a lot of changes at quarterback, so it's been tough for them to build momentum offensively. They're in kind of a defensive battle right now with 3.17 to go in this first half. So they're still very much in the game, but these sacks have hurt them, putting them behind the chains. Stoner looking to throw, steps up, throws to Douglas. Douglas trying to get through Harrison, but he's going to be tackled well shy of the first down marker. About a six-yard pickup on the play, but good discipline. It was good discipline defense on the back end that time by the Rams, realizing that the Raiders are going to have to try to take a deeper shot to pick up that third and 15, and you see that the Raiders tried to use a double move on the outside where the quarterback does a pump fake to this quick screen, and that blocker is going to flash, and then he's going to slip upfield And the Rams weren't having it. They did a good job of staying back, keeping everything in front of them, and then rallying to the tackle on that play to force the fourth down. Shepard got a punt block earlier. This time they get it away to Shippensburg, and it rolls out of bounds, and Shepard will have good field position. Another thing to note, Shippensburg getting the ball to start the second half. They have been shut out so far this season in the third quarter, so they've come out of the second half and pretty flat. And again, we can't say enough about this Rams special teams unit. We noticed the first couple punts today for the Raiders. Jackson Montrose able to kick the ball very well. A lot of hang time, really not allowing Shepard to get a good return. So what does Shepard do to respond to that? They start putting pressure on that punter to make him speed things up where he's not able to get that much hang time and take his time to, to get a good foot on the ball. So when they speed that up, that's going to be something that the Rams are trying to do to try to create those opportunities to get some returns on the punt game. First and 10 from the 42. Morgan. Play action, rolling to the right. Throws, caught for a first down for Shepard. It's Jeremiah Taylor. And the Rams will move the chains. Morgan, again, very comfortable, rolling out to his right-hand side and able to find a 
open wide receiver over the middle. Just does a good job of just keeping his eyes down the field and taking those check downs once he gets outside the pocket. And it's no reason to really resist it. He's good at it. Incorporate more of that into the offense to loosen things up. They'll run Malachi Brown, who spins out of a tackle. Gets the ball down to the 41-yard line. And again, about five on the play. He's been able to hold on to the ball today, but don't press your luck. You've had success holding on to the ball today. Wild spin moves and fighting to get every inch sometimes can get you into trouble when you're running in the trenches. You, you appreciate the aggressiveness and him trying to make a plays, but a lot of times when you're fighting for that extra inch, that's usually how those turnovers usually happen. Second and five, pass complete to Barry Hill. It's a first down, Shepard taking it into Chivensburg territory down to the 29-yard line, first and 10 for the Rams. And it's nice to see Hill getting back involved in offense, had a big game to start the season, but after that has really been used sparingly, only picking up a catch here and there, but being much more incorporated into the offensive attack so far today. Whistle from the official. I think it's some sort of clock issue, maybe. Minute 17 to go in this first half. Plenty of time for the Rams from the 29 of Shippensburg. Morgan throws, took a hit, I think, from Malachi Brown, ran into him, it looked like. And, then, and it'll be second and 10. And that's. The second time that something, like a miscue like that has happened in the backfield, and when you have those type of play-action passes or those RPO-type passes, the mesh is very important. That's where the area where the quarterback and the running back meet for that exchange, and if you're not able to do that cleanly, it's going to throw off the timing of that play. And again, a bump in the backfield, and the pass sails a little bit to the sidelines. Fortunate for the Rams, it only resulted in an incomplete pass. Morgan looking deep sideline, complete to Cam Dorner. Dan Dorner. Trying to break a tackle at the 10, finally brought down on the play by Brandon Holt. It's a first down for the Rams as they now move it deep into Shippensburg territory down to the six-yard line. And, and that's a mismatch that the Rams really want to take advantage of. Nasir Greer was there on the covers, the 5'8", 165-pound redshirt senior going up against a much Bigger, Cameron Dorner, 6'2", 190 pounds. First and goal from the six. Pass to Dorner on the screen pass. He shuts off a tackle, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. They will extend the lead to 15-3 with 43 seconds to go in this first half. Now you're starting to see that Rams offense settle into much more of a groove. We talked about how the Rams defense was out there for an extended time in the first quarter. We've seen kind of a role reversal here in the second quarter where now that Raiders defense has been out there for an extended period of time. But the only difference is the Shepard Rams offense able to take advantage of those opportunities and put some points on the board and extend this lead getting late here in the second quarter. James Bozick on to attempt the point after and the kick is up. And it is good. Shepard extends its lead to 16-3 with 43 seconds to go before halftime. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. Welcome you back to Rams Stadium. Shepard 16, Shippensburg 3. The Rams able to punch it in. Cam Dorner making some big catches on the drive. Barry Hill with a big play as well. Some solid runs from Malachi Brown. And the Rams end up in the end zone on the Cam Dorner screen pass. Your scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. It's 16-3 Shepard with 43 seconds to go before halftime. And the Rams will kick it away. Bozik boots it down to the goal line. Douglas on the return out to about the 24-yard line. And 
Shippensburg will take over here. They do get the ball to start the second half. There's still 36 seconds to work with. They have two timeouts, so we'll see how they decide to play it. I mean, ultimately the goal, you certainly want to come away with some points, but I think it's going to be important for the Raiders knowing that they get the ball back here in the second half. You don't want to do anything where you're going to risk a turnover. So what you would like to do on offense, let's just try to get something established going into halftime and just get some momentum going so when you're able to come back out, you're able to try to continue that momentum in the second half, but you certainly don't want to risk a turnover here to put yourself in even more of a difficult position going into halftime. Shepard kind of showing a too deep look of McDowell and Pena. And Miles Greer out there, so looks like and Kareem, three guys back. And Kareem Bryce, the slot to the near side, has a lot of space. That's where he goes. Good job. Pass is complete to Bryce. Harrison knocks him out. There you go. Around the 31-yard line. McDowell giving him a lot of space underneath. There's no reason to force it, like you mentioned. Timeouts. He's able to get to the sideline. Good decision and an accurate throw that time by Stoner. Second down, four ship. Second and four after the six-yard pickup. 30 seconds exactly to go here in this first half of play. 16-3, Rams on top. Bryce going in motion. Stoner. Under some pressure, throws complete to Bryant. First down, Shippensburg out toward midfield. That was tough. They motioned Bryce. Wide receiver look. The inside wide receiver ran a post. The other wide receiver ran up the seam while Bryce ran a wheel to the outside. You put a lot of pressure on that play side safety to make a decision, and you really can't be right in a good, accurate throw by Stoner for the completion. Stoner steps up rolling, done dipping out of bounds. Oh, Takes a shot on. from Grantham, and that's going to be a penalty. Come on. Dwayne Grantham. He was already going out of bounds. It was basically going to be second and nine. There was no reason for Grantham to go for the hit on that play, and that's just going to give them 15 yards, clock stoppage, great field position, fresh set of downs. That was just not the kind of play you want Grantham to make in this type of situation. You're in control of the game. Don't allow something that's going to give them a little bit of breathing room and get a little bit of confidence going into halftime. And they have about 13 seconds to work with here, 12.8. The penalty will set up ship with, and they got a good kicker. We already saw Montrose nail a 45-yarder, so that's a pretty good leg. First down and 10 here from the 31 with 12.8 seconds. If they can get him about 10 yards to work with here, he could make another field goal before halftime or even better for Shippensburg. Stoner standing in under the heat. Rolling, looking to run, tackled around the 15. They have five seconds. They burn their second to last timeout, and this should bring on the field goal unit here, Travis. So an opportunity for Ship to make a long one. O'Neill, good job of making a clean tackle in open space. And Stoner, that was also a good decision, trying not to force it in there, realizing that you're going to be able to come away with something as long as you don't turn the ball over. So you make the conservative play, pick up a couple extra yards, and put yourself in a position maybe to take one more shot towards the end zone if you think you can squeeze one off in a little bit of time. Or I think they're going to kick the field goal. Or go ahead and send out your field goal unit. This should be about a 42-yarder. They already made from 45 earlier, so you like your chances here with Montross, the veteran. Junior kicker. All on the far hash. That wide receiver Alex Roof is the holder. It's always the potential for a little bit of trickeration, but likely they're going to go ahead and kick the ball. Looks like the Rams are going to apply a little bit of ice. Let Montrose think about it just a little bit longer before he makes that field goal attempt. He might as well have had all three of its timeouts. 16 to 3, five seconds left in this first half. 16 to 3, Rams on top of Shippensburg here. Right before halftime, we got about a 42 yard field goal coming from Montrose, the Shippensburg kicker, to try to make this a 16 to 6 game before half. Competitive ball game in this rivalry. 
Shepard has won six consecutive games in the rivalry, and the Rams hold a 12-10 series lead. That six-game win streak dates back to 2005 before the Rams joined the PSAC Conference. Shepard is undefeated since joining the PSAC against Shippensburg. So 42-yard kick for Montross. Good snap, good hold. The kick looks good, and it is good from 42. So Montrose with two long field goals makes it 16-6 here heading into halftime. Shippensburg taking advantage of a Dwayne Grantham penalty on a late hit out of bounds and get the field goal here before the half. Our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. We will now look for Dylan Bishop here who will attempt to talk to Coach McCook before the half. Coach McCook making his way toward that 25-yard line where Dylan is standing there with Coach McCook. And, Dylan, whenever you are ready, go ahead and take it away. At the half. Dylan tries to stand still. All right. So, you guys, defense has been coming through. Special teams got yourself a safety. What have you liked from your team so far? Well, you know what? I, I, I don't. What I don't like is the penalties we're getting. We got to be more disciplined with how we play. Play fundamentally sound. We have to execute, and we got to get in sync offensively. So, uh, that's what I don't like. Those are things we have to fix. And uh, defense is playing well, but you know what? We can't have dumb penalties. We got to play smarter. All right, thanks, coach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Coach McCook, as the Rams head into halftime. With the 16-6 lead, we will take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll have the halftime show. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner, and this is my brother, Andrew, with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. We welcome you back here to Shepherdstown in Rams Stadium. 16-3, Shepherd on top of Shippensburg here at the half. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Our halftime show is brought to you by the Mansion Freddy Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Travis, what were your uh, thoughts on that first half for both teams? Again, early on, it looked like it was shaping up to be a similar type of contest from last year where the Rams' defense was going to have to be out there too long and have to make too many plays and eventually get worn down. But they were able to get things turned around. 
put some pressure on the quarterback, which really helped out that defense as far as getting them off the field on third down. And then the Rams offense was able to make the most of those opportunities, mixing in run and allowing those off-speed 50-50 balls to the sidelines. And again, there's no doubting the athleticism or the playmaking ability of the wideouts for Shepard. So when you're able to get the ball into their hands in space, they're able to do the rest. And Seth Morgan has done a good job of just staying settled down, taking those check downs, and allowing his athletes to make plays in space. So a good all-around performance by this Rams offense and defense and special teams so far. But I have to echo what Coach Bookook said. You got to eliminate those turn. I mean, you got to eliminate those silly penalties because that's what's really keeping Shippensburg into the game is those big 15-yard penalties that, that's giving up a ton of yardage. And not only that, it's giving them a fresh set of downs and giving that offense new life. And you're going up against a team. You know, there's no reason to dance around it. They've been struggling so far this year. They're one and three, struggling to move the ball on offense. So you don't want to give that group confidence or any type of thoughts in their head that they got a chance to move the ball, put up points, and possibly steal a win on the road. This is a group that last year went four and two on the road. So they're very comfortable going on the road and getting wins in hostile environments. So you want to take away that possibility by solid all around play. Good play so far by the Rams in all three phases of the game. You knock out. The silly penalties, I think they control this game for the second half as well. Shippensburg, they've shown some good things. I just think they need a more sustained attack on the offensive side of the ball. You're not going to be able to trade field goals for touchdowns and expect to come away with very many wins. But I've been very impressed with the freshman quarterback, Stoner. He stepped in. It's been a revolving door so far this season for the Raiders. But looks like Stoner has been a pretty good answer so far today. If that's your third-string quarterback and he's able to go out there and play like that, you're in a pretty good position. They just need to be able to make some more plays and, and help him out as far as the supporting cast is concerned and get some points on the board so they can claw back into this ball cl- cl- claw back into this ball game. They get the ball back first in the second half, so see what type of adjustments they're going to be able to make and see if they can script something with this opening drive that's going to put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, it seems like Stoner, I mean, he brings a lot to the table. He's pretty mobile. I think they need to protect him a little bit better if they want to stand a chance against that Shepard defense. For the Shepard side, you only had one turnover in that first half, so that was good uh, compared to last week when you turned the ball over five total times. And the interception really didn't hurt you at the time. It was thrown, so uh, feel pretty good about that. Maybe just a little bit more balance at times or at least do what – your strengths are don't try to force the ball down the field they took a couple sacks it felt like when they were trying to do a little bit too much offensively but overall i think both teams are playing pretty well considering what your expectations were for them coming in um we'll see how the second half plays out definitely looking forward to it though travis and something that I really enjoyed seeing in that first half was seeing Nazir Russell able to make some plays for that Rams offense. If you look at the drives that the Rams had so far today, that was probably their best drive of the game was when Russell was in the game. He was able to do it catching out of the backfield. He's also able to do it with hard running down towards the goal line. So if they're able to get some type of continuity between Brown and Russell in the backfield, it's only going to be that much more beneficial for that Rams offense moving forward. All right, we're going to take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from Kyle McLaughlin back in the studio. we got about 13 minutes to go before the start of the second half, and then Colin will have a scoreboard update for you on the other side of this two-minute break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, 
there was an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. We're the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer, but that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. At the half in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, as we welcome you into the halftime scoreboard show on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Colin McLaughlin. Is at halftime, it is the Shepherd Rams leading the Shippensburg Raiders by a score of 16 to six. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference now. Also at halftime. It is Millersville currently leading Lock Haven by a score of 21 to 17. Also at halftime, it is California University of Pennsylvania on top of Clarion by a score of 17 to 7. And the one that most people here in the conference have their eyes on, at least in the East Division, that is Kutztown and East Stroudsburg as East Stroudsburg 4-0 on the year Kutztown. 2-2 two and two after defeating Shepard last week. It is the Golden Bears leading East Stroudsburg by a score of 14-7. to seven. Some other scores around the Pennsylvania, or excuse me, some other games around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference later on today. You got two kicking off at 2 p.m. That is Mercyhurst at Edinburgh as well as Bloomsburg at Westchester. Then at 4 p.m., it's Gannon at Seton Hill. And at 6 p.m., it is IUP going up against Slippery Rock. Let's now get some scores from around the NCAA Division I Top 25 games that are currently in action. At halftime, it is number 6, Penn State at Northwestern. That game tied at 10 at the half. 5.22 to go in the second quarter between number 8 USC and Colorado. It is USC up 27-7. to 3.41 to go in the second quarter. It is Kentucky dominating number 22 Florida. They're up 23 to nothing over the Gators. Kicking off at 3.30 p.m. it will be number 1 Georgia at Auburn. Also number 2 Michigan at Nebraska. Number 24, Kansas, at number 3, Texas. Then at 4 p.m., you have number 23, Missouri, at Vanderbilt. Number 13, LSU, at number 20, Ole Miss. At 6.30, number 9, Oregon, at Stanford. Then at 7 p.m., Iowa State, at number 14, Oklahoma. At 7.30, number 11, Notre Dame, at number 17, Duke. At 7.30, South Carolina, at number 21, Tennessee. And at 9 p.m., it's number 12, Alabama at Mississippi State, then at 10 p.m., number 7, Washington at Arizona, and at 10.30, Nevada host, or excuse me, Nevada at number 25, Fresno State. Yesterday, it was number 19, Oregon State beating number 10, Utah, 21-7. to That's your top 25 scores later today in the Big 12. The West Virginia Mountaineers kick off at 8 p.m. against TCU. Again, at the half right now between Shepard and Shippensburg, it is the Rams leading the Raiders 16-6. to We're going to step aside, take another two-minute break here on the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm halftime show. And on the other side of that break, we'll send it out back in Shepherdstown for quarter number three. 
with four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states. Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords. Financing from 0%. Parsons' goal of financing for all. And Parsons' famous above market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. Don't tease me like that, Verzalina. We welcome you back to the Rams Stadium. 16 to 6, our score, Shepard. Shepard on top of Shippensburg here at the half. Nick Verzalina alongside me, Travis Smith, of about five minutes to go before the start of the second half. Dylan Bishop, our cameraman, or our on-site producer slash sideline reporter back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin, Matt and Daryl Miller running our cameras as the 2023 Hall of Fame class for Shepard being honored. Currently, uh, Coach Klein, a part of that class of 2023. Travis, as... uh, we get ready for the start of the second half. What are some things that you're looking forward to seeing from these two teams in the second half? One, just Shepard just trying to continue to work to get something going on the ground. They've been using those RPO-style passes to attack over the middle. I like that, but in order to make those RPO play-action pass type of plays work even better, you're going to have to show that Raiders defense the threat of the run. If they're able to get Russell and Malachi Brown going here in the second half, is going to make things that much easier for the offense and Seth Morgan to be effective in the passing game. The defense has been playing tough. they got to eliminate the silly penalties. Special teams has continued to be red hot. I expect them to continue to make plays here in the second half. Looking over to Shippensburg, they've got to try to make something happen on offense. They have some talent on the special teams unit, but the Rams have done a good job as far as neutralizing that. They've got to try to do something that's going to break Red Douglas free somehow in the offense or on special teams. So that's going to be important for the Raiders to get back on track. Is just trying to find a way to get Red Douglas involved in the game plan. And you talked about it going into halftime. They're going to have to do a better job of protecting their young quarterback. Sam Stoner has come out, played very well so far, but he's been getting beat up, staying in the pocket so far today. So if the Raiders are able to do a better job of protecting the quarterback, that should open things up on offense. And that Raiders defense, they've been playing pretty well themselves. Those big defensive tackles have been creating havoc so far versus that Rams offense. When you look at big Jeremiah Carruthers and Jacoby Sherrard have done a good job of either collapsing the pocket or getting their hands up to bat passes down. So a lot of good to see so far today but you just need a little bit more as far as that offensive unit is concerned for the Shippensburg Raiders to try to claw their way back into today's contest. The rest of that Hall of Fame class for Shepard includes Nathan Minnick for Shepard Baseball, Coach Klein for Shepard Football, 
Jamie Ritchie for men's soccer and Ricky Schmidt for football. We'll now go over our first half stats. Brought to you by Larry DeMarco at Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the tri-state, they have you covered. The running game, we'll start with Shippensburg stats here at the half. Seven carries for Tanner Hess, 25 yards. One for Neely for seven yards. And Stoner ran eight times. He's going to have negative 12 net yards, but he gained 14 yards on his eight carries. Was sacked several times in that first half. He finishes 8 of 16 passing for 78 yards, was sacked three times in the first half. Red Douglas, four catches, 36 yards. Kareem Bryce, two catches, 16 yards. Jamin Bryant, one catch for 21 yards. Alex Roof, one catch for five yards. On the defensive side, Jackson leads the first half with six tackles. Gilmore with four, two for Holt, and two for David, and then for the Shepherd University Rams, Malachi Brown, six carries for 24 yards in that first half, one for Nazia Russell for four yards in the touchdown. Seth Morgan, 14 of 20 in the first half, 182 yards, and INT was sacked four times. Barry Hill, the leading receiver here at halftime, five catches, 42 yards. Nazia Russell, two catches for 48 yards. Jeremiah Taylor, two catches, 31 yards. And Cam Dorner, two catches, 29 yards, and the score. And the defense for Shepard, Dante Harrison with five tackles, Harold O'Neill with five, Dwayne Grantham with four, and Jack Baxter with three, including two first-half sacks. Montrose hit from 45 and also hit from 42, and they're saying it's a 43 on here. Cam Dorner with a touchdown reception, Nazir Russell with a touchdown run, and Shepard with the safety, and they gave it to the team as it rolled out of the end zone, of course, on that blocked punt. Some other numbers that stand out here in this first half, the Raiders have ran the ball for just a net gain of 20 yards on 16 attempts. Shepard has ran the ball for a net gain of 5 yards due to the sacks, so 12 for 5 in that first half. Penalty yardage, though, a big stand here at the half. Travis, seven penalties for Shepard for 82 yards. Just two penalties for Shippensburg for 15 yards. And that's and that's really what has kept Shippensburg in the game because those penalties have resulted in extending drives, and the Raiders able to take those extended drives. They've only been able to come away with field goals. If they were able to turn one of those into a touchdown, we'd have a much different contest so far today. But, again, this Rams defense has been bend but don't break all year long. So they've been able to turn the Raiders away in the red zone. But you, you can't expect to do that week in and week out and during the course of four quarters of football. So the Rams just going to have to clean it up. A lot of those penalties have been avoidable. When you have those late hits when guys are going out of bounds, particularly quarterbacks, you know that's going to be a penalty. Let the man run out of bounds force those third and long situations, and that's only going to be to your benefit. It's going to get you off the field, your offense on the field, so you have a chance to extend this lead. So if the Rams are able to eliminate those penalties, I think they'll be able to take control of this contest. Shepard will kick it away to start the second half. Bozick boots it into the end zone. Douglas will decide to just take the knee. Our second half kickoff is brought to you by Ollie's VIP Northside, the best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg or go to or Ollie's VIP. We'll see you for the game. First down and 10 for the Raiders from their own 25-yard line. And we'll see if this Shippensburg offense can get something going to start this second half. Stoner in the gun on first down and 10 from the 25. Hess the back. And they'll fake it to Hess. Get Stoner out in motion. Dump it down in the flat. Good tackle in space from Amari Terry around the 29-yard line. Hauled hauled in on the play by the tight end, Eric Benson. First time we called his name today from Central Catholic High School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The high school of Dan Marino. Benson, that's only his... Second catch so far this year, the converted wide receiver 
well, used to be a wide receiver, now used as a tight end. They tried that play early on in the game, and Omari Terry just blew it up. But that time, Omari Terry not able to get up in time enough to deny him the pass, and good pickup on first down. Hess running up the middle. You know, about two on the play before he stacked up by the front seven of Shepard. Kevin Kowser leading the charge. Bednarski as well, one of the first men, or two of the first men there. And a good start so far by Shippensburg. You get a good gain on first down, you come back, you pound it on second down, now you're in the third and short. Now you have the option whether you can go for a high percentage pass underneath. The quarterback also has that option to pull it down, call his own number, and pick up the first down with his legs. So right now the playbook's wide open for this Raiders offense. Gain about one on the play, third down and four. Deep ball down the far sideline for Douglas, and he makes the catch deep into Shepard territory. Harrison in coverage, a big play for the Raiders. You saw Harrison and McDowell exchange a look over there on the sidelines. If Harrison's playing up that close, that safety has to be a little bit quicker and getting over the top to help him. And that time, just Stoner able to deliver an accurate pass to get past Harrison. Stoner in the shotgun formation. Running back is Hess to his right. Stoner trying to adjust at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the 35. He'll run Hess. Big hole to that far side. He lowers the shoulder and drives Grantham out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. That was a nice counterpunch that time by the Raiders' offense. You burn Harrison on the previous play, so you realize he's going to have to be a little bit quicker to bail out this time. So what do you do? You get him matched up one-on-one with Red once again. You use Red to run him off, and then you run Hess right out there to that empty space to pick up a nice gain on first down. Nice one-two punch that time by the Raiders' offense. We'll come back the other way with Hess up the middle this time. and It's brought down by JT Komoyao. Be third and short. Four ship, third and about two. 12-15 to go in this third quarter. 16-6, to six, Shepard on top, but Shippensburg moving the ball in this rivalry matchup, PSAC East action. And Harrison, he, he, he gives you a lot of talent, good size for the sophomore corner. 6'1", 185. He likes to get up and play a lot of bump and run coverage, but the speedier wide receivers have given him trouble so far this year. They'll run. Baxter making the tackle. Hess again on the carry. Looks like he may have enough for the first down, and they will now move the chains. Shippensburg offense just... Just making conservative play calls short of that big pass to Red Douglas. You certainly want to get him involved in your offensive game plan. He does nothing but good for you on that side of the ball. That loosens up the defense, and that enables you to get back to the running game. Do you want to stay on schedule? And most importantly for this Raiders offense, stay ahead of the chains. Douglas handing it off to Hess. Hess. Good patient run. Down to the 20-yard line. It's a zone-style running game to the left side of that offensive line. Right behind left guard, Robert Chaturkin, the redshirt freshman, six foot, 290 pounds, able to clear out some space for the patient run by Hess. Gain about five on the play. Second down and five, they'll run Hess again. He gets Good by Anelia Pena, but... Good recovery on the Shepard end of things to bring him down. Looked like he had a lot of room to that outside, but I think that's coming out, coming over after Pena missed the tackle. Shepard was able to make the play. Not coming out, I believe that was Kai Fagan coming up to make that play. And it just shows you the type of speed on that Rams defense. Again, you were able to get them out of position early on in the play. Hess makes a good jump stop, beats Pena, which is something difficult to do in and of itself. Looked like he has a lot of wide open space on that home sideline for the Rams. And then that Rams defense just closes quickly to take away that opportunity. Yeah, I think you're right, Travis. Kai Fagan, the freshman from Martinsburg out there at linebacker for Shepard. 
That was, I mean, that was a tough play. That's a D lineman out there giving a little bit of ground, making that tackle in space on Hess. Hess has been pretty tough so far today. Hadn't been able to break that long run, but you can tell that he's a capable runner. Right now, he has stepped out of the game, and the, the Temple transfer is now in the ball game for the Raiders in Onassis and Neely. 5'11", 215-pound grad student. Get a bigger body down inside the red zone for the Raiders offense. First and ten for the Raiders. They'll run Stoner. Stoner gets a good block. Stoner is into the end zone. Touchdown, Shippensburg. We got a ball game here at Ram Stadium. And the Raiders have been setting that up all game long. They've been doing that zone relook, zone relook, zone relook. And Stoner has been giving every time. He's been giving every time. But once you get down that close to the goal line, if you've shown that play a couple of times already, it is so tough to account for that quarterback when he decides to pull it. And that time, good blocking on the outside by Benson, able to create just enough space for Stoner, the freshman, to take it in to get that touchdown for Shippensburg here early on in the second half. 16 to 12 our score, 903 to go in this first or in this third quarter. And the extra point is up and good. It's now 16-13. Shepard still on top, but Shippensburg able to get into the end zone. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Shippensburg taking the opening drive of the second half into the end zone to make it a 16-13 game. Our scoring drive summaries are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district. And it's running into the end zone. On that one was the quarterback, Sam Stoner, from about 10 yards out. We got a game, 16-13. 9.03 to go in the third quarter. Shepard will get its first possession of the second half. Montross on to kick it away. And I believe that's Dorner going to field it in the end zone, and he will take it down for a knee. Shepard will get it out to the 25. Tangle up at the 40-yard line. Official right there, no penalty on the play. We might have to give out an Academy Award to Gabriel MacArthur for Shippensburg. Did his best impersonation of Lottie Devok flopping on that play, but not getting the call. The kids listening at home don't know who Vladi Devok is. <laughs> How about LeBron James? Yeah, when they think of flopping, they probably think of LeBron. <laughs> James Harden, maybe. There you go. <laughs> First and 10 from the 25 for Shepard as they'll run Malachi Brown. I like that action that Shepard just showed on that, that zone run up the look. But not only that, they give you the added wrinkle of that fake end around coming off of it. When you have athletes like Batten and Dorner and Taylor, if you can incorporate that speed or that threat to get to the edge in your traditional running game it's only going to make that zone run that much tougher to stop Seth Morgan throwing to the outside complete to Jeremiah Taylor out at the 35 yard line in coverage on the play was DJ Jackson first down ramps so we were able to see the success that Shippensburg was able to have with their Scripted opening drive, moving downfield, getting the touchdown. So now the Rams have an opportunity to come out with their own drive to try to answer that touchdown. Rolling out to the near side is Morgan. He throws incomplete, intended for Cam Dorner. Evan Townsend Henry giving chase. It looked like Morgan may have had a little bit of space to pull it down, but he thought otherwise when he saw Evan Townsend Henry 
quickly gaining ground. We haven't said his name a lot, but he is a high-quality inside linebacker. And he's faced a lot of similar opponents that this Rams team has faced over the years, or PSAC opponents have faced. He's our, last year played against Southern Connecticut State, East Stroudsburg, and Assumption. I want to see Assumption. We always see that name popping up versus PSAC opponents. I want to see them play in person. Maybe you'll see it in the regional. There's Dorner underneath making men miss and getting close to the first down marker right at that 45-yard line. That will be enough for a first down. Shepard, Cam Dorner with that extra effort, able to get that first down for the Rams and continue this drive. 7.40 to go in this third quarter, 16-13, Shepard on top. Dorner looked like he got the wind knocked out of him on the play. Goes over to the sidelines, tapping on his helmet. Needs a breather, but that was a good play. You pick up a first down like that, that'll earn you a shot of Gatorade on the sidelines. Morgan will run Malachi Brown. Good hole, and Brown spinning out of a tackle, but taking a shot on that one. Coming up and making the hit as Isaiah Gilmore bring up a second down for the Rams after the short pickup. Gain about two on the play, second and eight. You're starting to see this Rams offense settle into a little bit more of a groove. Again, you don't get a big gain on first down, but your offense remains on schedule and you stay ahead of the chains. Morgan throws underneath, complete to Brian Chester, who lowers the shoulder and has the first down for Shepard. And again, we've gotten so accustomed to seeing this Rams offense just attacking teams vertically down the field. You have the big arm quarterback and Tyson Bajan, a much different style of quarterback with Seth Morgan, and he's very much more comfortable in a traditional West Coast style of offense. The short passes where he's getting the ball out of his hands quickly. This does a good job of finding those receivers in open space and delivering accurate throws over the middle. They're going to mark Jester about a yard short. So third and one, and Morgan looking deep. Down the field and incomplete. Intended for Cameron Dorner. Good coverage on the back end by Brandon Holt. And so Shepard takes a shot on third and one, and I'm a little surprised now that they're punting. And Holt did a good job of just playing the wide receiver's hands because the ball was delivered accurately and one time the wide receiver had a chance to bring it in, but Holt being a disciplined defensive back didn't lose the ball in the sun. He was just playing the wide receiver's hand, so once he saw him reach or make that attempt to get the ball, he just popped it right out of there to force the Rams to punt the ball in fourth down. And Shepard will punt. Barrick's punt is a high kick. Bounces at the six. Nobody tracked it. Naeem Alexander made an effort but it will roll into the end zone for a touchback. So I'm a little bit surprised. You took the deep shot on third and one. I thought maybe they were doing that because they felt like they had two plays to get the first down, maybe catch them off guard, but they do elect to punt. So and That was a savvy play on the punt by the punt returner, Adam Gregorio, coming up faking like he was going to receive the punt just short of the 10-yard line as the defense collapsed on him. The ball went behind him and rolled into the end zone. A couple of Rams defenders tried to make a play on the ball, but that was just a savvy play by the punt returner to fool the defense and get his offense better starting field position. So first and 10 for the 20 now for Shippensburg. Stoner starting to get comfortable, dumps it down to Benson in the flat. He gets out to about the 30-yard line before he's brought down on the far side by Amari Terry. And a very similar play to what they started their drive to open up the second half. Why not? Work that time, do it again until that defense makes an adjustment. And it seems like that they have found something as far as a formation where it keeps Terry out of the box where he's not able to come up and take that play away like he did to begin today's game. Gain of 10 on the play brings up a first down and 10 now for the Raiders. The run Neely, he takes a shot on that one. From Terry again, gain of about four on the play, bring up second and six. Coming up on five minutes to go in this third quarter, Shepard hanging on to a three-point lead, but Shippensburg has taken over this third quarter so far, moving the ball again early in the drive, gain of four on the play, second down and six for the Raiders from their own 34. They'll run Neely again up the middle. It's about a yard on the play. 
And again, just a conservative approach. You get a good gain on first down. There's no reason to risk it on second down. You pound it again. You bring in Onassis Neely, like we mentioned, 5'11", 215. Much more of a downhill thumper as opposed to Hess. But Hess is tough inside the tackles as well. But you just wear down that defense. Like we mentioned, a very warm day, even warmer down there on that turf. The Rams defense was able to be out there on the field a lot during that first quarter, but the Rams offense turned things around the second quarter. They weren't out there as long in the second quarter, but if you can have that sustained running attack here early on in the second half, maybe you get some bigger gains in the fourth quarter. Nathan Muley made the tackle on the previous play. Stoner under pressure, flags in the backfield. Stoner throws complete. Looked to be just short of that first down marker. Jack Baxter making the tackle at the 39-yard line. There are two (laughs) flags on the play, so this is coming back anyway. It was it was a lot of bodies on the field. Those offensive linemen just doing whatever they can, they can to try to scrap and protect their quarterback, and that time just grabbing a bit too much jersey. I'm sure Stoner doesn't mind getting those holding penalties. It's better than the alternative because he had to run around for his life there in the first half, getting sacked quite a few times. Depending on where they spotted, it would have been a fourth and one or a first down, so Coach McCook electing for the longer third down here. And it's been tough. Shippensburg has had trouble, as with any offense, when you're behind the chains and third and long situations, you have to force the ball down the field, and that opens yourself up to possibly turning the ball over. Third and 15 from the 25. Stoner adjusts at the line, three receivers to this near side. And the lefty fires it over the middle, caught. But well short of the first down, it tackled in space by J.T. Coma out around the 30-yard line. Just a five-yard pickup. They needed 17, and that will bring up fourth down. And a drive that started out with a lot of promise kind of gets derailed by penalties. We know the problems that penalties cause for Shepard in the first half, and that time once the Raiders get behind the chains, and those big holding penalties, they're just they're just tough to overcome for any offense. When you have offense that's just been struggling as much as Shippensburg has this year, they're drive killers when you get those holding penalties. Shepard gets some pressure on the punt. Miles Greer lets it go out of bounds. We never really had an option as it heads out. And this is going to be good field position for Shepard. They'll take over at their own 44-yard line, and we'll see the Rams offense again. In this second half, 3.08 to go in this third quarter. First down and 10, Shepard hanging on to a 16-13 lead. Travis, this could be a big drive in the game. The Shippensburg offense has only averaged 14 points per game on the season, so they're already approaching their average, and Shepard would like to extend its lead even more, make it tougher on this young Raider offense. Morgan. With the counter play on the give to, I believe that was Dorner. You saw that motion earlier that time they gave it to Cam on the end around. It didn't really work out. And I like that play because it freezes that backside defensive end. You fake that zone run to one side, then you have that end around coming off of it. So essentially on the backside, you don't even have to block that backside defensive end. So that's an extra offensive lineman that you can get downfield because you're pretty much blocking that backside defensive end with a wide receiver because he has to honor that wide receiver faking that end around. Waggle motion, wide open. Jeremiah Taylor makes a man miss. Get upfield. Yeah, he's running more side to side than up the field and Taylor does have the first down as he moves it into Shippensburg territory to the 44 yard line. (laughs) Looked like Taylor was having that conversation with his teammates. He's like, hey man, I'm just trying to make a play. You you gotta get get north and south. East and west isn't going to help us. Still got the first down though. First and 10 to the 43. Morgan in the pistol. Fisher goes in motion from left to right. And they'll hand it to Malachi. Big hole for Malachi Brown. Spins out on the tackle at the 30. And this is not going to be close. It's a touchdown, Shepard. Malachi Brown makes one man miss. And he takes it to the house from 43 yards out to extend the Rams' lead at 22-13. 
tough inside run play by the Rams. Dustin Fisher leading the way. The Rams like using that power look where that guard pulls, loads up to the play side linebacker. You get that kick out block, usually by your tight end that time, supplied by Dustin Fisher, and it creates just enough of a lane. And again, Malachi Brown, he's showing that he he's tough in, the, in between the trenches. His only issue has just been holding on to the ball, and that has not been an issue today as he's able to take it in for a big score. James Bozick's point after is good. Shepard up by 10 now at 23-13. 1.46 to go in this third quarter. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm going to watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm going to watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Shepard 23, Shippensburg 13, 146 to go in this third quarter. The 43-yard touchdown run from Malachi Brown. Rams take over. Get a good throw to Jeremiah Taylor, and then one play later, Malachi Brown breaking off of a tackler and taking it to the house from 43 yards out. Our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. On the kickoff, another touchback. Ozick doing a good job today of getting those balls into the end zone and not allowing the explosive special teams unit of Shippensburg with Red Douglas to do anything. That's one of the things you can do to really just take them out of the game plan altogether. You want to limit the opportunities that those playmakers have the ball in their hands. And just been an interesting chess match. We talked about always talk about offense and defense, but it's been a great chess match as far as special teams units and how they've matched up so far. And the Rams have gotten the better of that matchup in today's contest. So just an update here, 93, not Kai Fagan. It is Jack Brutus. So That's a tough name, Jack Brutus. Deep ball down the far sideline, and or over the middle, I should say, and caught by Jamin Bryant. So Bryant getting involved. We see that Chip definitely has some wide receivers that can make some big plays. The question will be the quarterback play, and Stoner just seems to be growing with confidence today. Uh, definitely throws a good ball. First down and 10. He's shown that he's got the arm strength to get it over the top. The first couple of plays here in the second half, they, they've taken their shots downfield, and they've been there. This Rams defensive unit, they're aggressive out on the edge. They're up playing a lot of bump and run, so that means that those corners, excuse me, those safeties have to do a good job of getting over the top. Those corners have to do a good job of getting their hands on the wide receivers and rerouting them because if they're not able to slow them down, it's really going to expose those safeties not being able to get over the top and Stoner able to deliver an accurate pass to get a big gain, a much-needed gain for this Raiders offense. Naeem Alexander, the player down. Getting straight. You, you can see the Charlie horse from here. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Well, it's hot. I mean, for <laughs> September 30th, it is definitely, you know, hotter than you would expect. And, of course, on the turf, it's about 10 degrees hotter than it is uh, not on the turf. So, sun beating down as well. We're in the middle of the day pretty much. So. Cramps happen, and luckily that is all it appeared to be for Naeem Alexander, one of the corners in this rotation. Shepard already kind of beat up well at corner with the injury to Clayton Batten before the season. And a snap going off of Stoner's hands. Luckily he catches it and then slides down. Smart play there with Kevin Kowser and JT Comiao in the area. One of the few times you saw a young quarterback make a mistake where he mistimed the snap in relation to that motion coming across. You want to make sure you would just, you just want to make a decision. Are you going to snap the ball before the motion guy gets to the center or are you going to wait until he clears the center and get the ball because it was kind of like he got got caught in no man's land. The ball came out kind of funky. It was a high snap 
on top of that, and like you mentioned, a, a very good play for the freshman just to get in control of the ball and taking it down, live to fight another day. You don't want to make a bad situation worse. So second and 16. He's under pressure. Stoner avoids the sack and gets it out there complete with running room in on that catch. Stoner, like we mentioned, 5'11", 210 pounds. He's stout. It's going to take more than a stiff breeze to knock him down, and it looked like Harrison was in the backfield supplying the pressure. The young quarterback able to shake off the defender, deliver an accurate pass to Hess, who was out there waiting for it. And at that point in time, the defense had already been cleared out with that trips look to that side. So Hess had a lot of room to run and was able to pick up a big gain on that play, which almost turned out to be a sack at the beginning of the play. And that works in for or works out for a first down and ten, and that will be the final play of this third quarter. Our third quarter was brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361, as well as W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. We'll take a one-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll have the fourth quarter, 23-13 Shepard. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. We welcome you back to Rams Stadium. Our fourth quarter is brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361, as well as the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. First down and 10 now from the 21-23-13 Shepard, and they'll run Hess up the middle. Does Shippensburg, and he is stuffed. Maybe a loss of one on the play. Baxter, he's been living in the backfield today. Yeah, Shepard has definitely liked what they've seen from Jack Baxter this season. He missed all of last season with an injury, I believe, and uh, played a little bit two years ago, and now has been a full-time starter on that D-line, and a guy that they needed because they lost some depth on that D-line uh, due to graduation as well as some transfers, and Baxter has filled a good role for them. And, again, this play stuffed by the Rams' defense. And the Rams' defense, they're not. They're not. Kevin Kowser leading the way. Yeah, they're not biting on the window dressing. That time they showed a lot of action going to the sidelines to try to pull somebody out of the box so they could – Pop something inside, the Rams not buying it, and again, blowing it up and putting this young offense behind the chains. And Big drive right now for Shippensburg. Third and 12 from the 22. Four receiver set. Stoner takes the snap. It's a high snap. He's under some pressure. Oh. Ball comes out. It's a loose a football, and they're ruling incomplete. Bednarski diving on top of it. Brutus coming in off the edge to knock that one loose. And they will rule it incomplete. So now a field goal unit jogging on to make it a seven-point game with 13.33 to play in this fourth quarter. Lucky break that time for Shippensburg. Not turning the ball over and giving your field goal kicker a chance to Put some more points on the board. 
Good job by the defense that time. Even though you didn't get the turnover, you still get the stop and force them into a long field goal attempt. About a 40-yarder. He's hit from 45 and 43 so far today. Good snap, good hole. Montress's kick is good from 40. He's tough. And that extends or cuts the lead down to 23-16. Let's take a 30-second break. 13-27 to go. In this ball game, Shepard looking to get the football back. This is Shepard Ranch Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Give you back to Shepherdstown. Or Shippensburg able to get another field goal, a 40 yarder, to make it 23 16 with 13 27 to go in this fourth quarter. Sam, Sam Stoner able to drive him down the field, get him in field goal range, but the Rams defense holds strong right around the 30 or so yard line uh, with some good. Stops in the backfield, resulting in the field goal attempt, and the kick was good from 40 yards out. Our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinosa for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Cam Dorner will take this one from about a yard out of the end zone, and Dorner gets split up at the 16-yard line. Coming up and making the hit was Javon Cruz. Man, oh, man, there was no doubt about it. Cruz in space. Is absolutely smoking Dorner on that play. Luckily, Dorner holding on to that football as he had to field it and take it out because he fielded it at that one-yard line. And I don't believe he was in the end zone when he fielded that football, so he had to take it out, and it results in tough field position for Shepard at their own 14. I agree with you on that one, Nick. He was fortunate just to hold on to the ball. Javon Cruz came flying down the field to make that hit first and 10 now from the 14. And the Rams will run the ball. That's a new ball yeah, carrier Barnett. in the game. Barnett in on the game, the six foot, 225 pound red shirt freshman from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Really good size. That's prototypical size right there. Six foot, 225 pounds. Yeah, the Utah State transfer. I've been kind of waiting to see him because he has that size. We heard a little bit about him in Coach McCook's preseason press conference, but we hadn't seen him yet. And he gets five on first down. So Barnett may be taking the Avon Holly role of game in hand. Let's pound the football they throw it complete to jeremiah taylor on the outside that will be a first down for shepherd not that this game is over by any stretch but you want that big physical back that has the experience of playing the position going to, going to wear that defense down chew up clock and like you mentioned nobody's really stepped up to really take that running back position yet so why not put him out there? As long as he knows what he's, what his responsibilities are when it comes to, like, pass protection and things of that nature, get him out there and see what you have. And look at Barnett. First down, Shepard. Gaping hole right up the middle. Great blocking up front from the Rams, but Barnett with some explosiveness, and he gets the first down for the Rams. He has the look of a running back. Has Certainly big passes, legs. The, yeah, passes the eye test for sure. Kind of reminds me of like a Brandon Jacobs type with that height. First down and 10 from the 41. Jacobs was a little bit taller, though, but Barnett getting the carry here. <laughs> Had a bit more beef on him, too. <laughs> yeah. The 220 is pretty big. Yeah, you know? absolutely. 225 for a running back, absolutely. I think Brandon Jacobs, that was like 6'4", which is just unheard of, really. He's a little closer to the 260 mark as opposed to 225. But, hey, but again, maybe, like, if Barnett was 6'4", yeah. maybe he would be 2'6". There six. you go. <laughs> per capita, yeah. he's the same size. 
Martin at this time, not much room. And as Shippensburg's defense coming after it now. Make it third and ten, going up and making that tackle was Garrett David. And, and it may be something where Barnett just doesn't have that familiarity with the entirety of the playbook. So what do you do when you have a young running back out there that doesn't know what he's doing? Well, you give him the ball. So that way you know what he's going to do. Because if he doesn't have the ball, you don't know what he's going to do. So you, you eliminate that concern by just giving him the football. Morgan Take it. dumps it down to Brian Jester, who has the first down on the play action. So Shepard able to extend this drive. Oh, flag on the play. Late flag coming in from the far sideline. Just over 10 minutes to go in this one. 10-18 to play. 23-16. A couple of Rams seem to be pointing over to the Shippensburg sidelines. We've had a couple dust-ups on that home sideline so far today. And again, not sure why Morgan hesitated on that one. Dump it off to your tight end. Let that big fella do the dirty work. Don't know exactly what this flag will end up being, but Shepard currently working with a first and ten. Looks like it could be on the Raiders. Delay of game after the play. So. Somebody must have thrown the football or done something with the ball, uh, which Not delays often. the start of the next first downs. You don't hey, get a delay hey. of game on the defense too often. And that's a big penalty happen. because that gives the Rams the first down. I think they might have already had it, but it extends it at least. So, either way. Ball now down to the 45-yard line, 10-18 to go in this fourth quarter. Shepard by 7 at 23-16. Right. So the referee is explaining it right now to the Shippensburg coach, was saying something as the offensive player was going to hand the ball to the referee. The Shippensburg defender smacked the ball out of his hands, and that was the call for the delay of game. Yeah, I figured it was something with the football. Kind of reminds you of, like, if in basketball, if the ball goes through the net and you hit it out, uh, that's also a delay of game. Don't really know what happens, but it is a call. Malachi Brown gets the carry. Yeah, it's a technical sometimes. Or at least a warning. The Rams having success up the middle, and I think doing no small part because Jacoby Sherrard was on the sidelines trying to catch his breath. Like we mentioned, a very warm day, and those big guys down in the trenches doing all the dirty work. You're going to need to rotate them in and out. And the Rams doing a good job of identifying that personnel, seeing he's not in the game. And what you want to do, you want to run where the defense ain't. You attack that gap. And, again, Sherrard's in the game. They try to run up the middle. And there's a host of Raiders defenders there to bring down the Rams running back. Good tackle there by Ray Jones. Makes it third down and short for Shepard. 9.20 to go. In this fourth quarter, Rams up by a touchdown at 23-16. Morgan throws complete to Cam Dorner on the wide receiver screen. Dorner trying to find room around that sideline to pick up the first down, and he does. And a quick play to the short side of the field that time by Morgan, able to get the ball out of his hands quickly, getting the ball to his athletes in space, and they're able to do the rest. And you know the Rams have that wrinkle in their back pocket where they keep showing you that quick stuff to the sidelines it's only going to be a matter of time before they show you that same action pump fake and take that deep shot over the middle that's where rams have had a lot of success this season first and 10 from the 31 barnett back in the ball game it's a down at about the 30 before he stacked up that was a similar play that malachi brown scored his touchdown on an inside power play trying to create a seam right down the middle but with Sherrard back in the game that's some uh, tough sledding inside Eight fifteen to go in this fourth quarter Morgan handing it to Barnett again running hard down to about the 25 yard line brought down by Evan Townsend Henry in on that one Barnett has come in and Really supplied a spark. He checks out of the game. Malachi Brown checks in. Now you have a little bit of contrast to the backfield because you got that big banger in Barnett. Then you bring in the speedier option with Malachi Brown. Also good hands out of the backfield. So 
Again, the Rams continuing to tinker on the offensive side of the ball, just trying to find that right combination to get things going. Brown the back here on third down and five. They'll run Malachi. Stutter steps in the hole and doesn't find much room. Again, Henry coming up to make that tackle for Shippensburg. And it looked like there was going to be a short. yeah. It looked like there was going to be a lane there at the beginning, but Townsend Heron, Henry quickly closing that gap. Saying fourth and about two. Seven minutes ago, Shepard's going to line up to go for it. Play clock winding down to about 20 seconds, so plenty of time for the Rams. As Morgan lines up in the pistol. Fisher is the H-back. Two receivers to the far side, and Taylor and Dorner. They run Malachi Brown. He dives forward, reaches for the first down marker, and they will give him the first down. Sherrard had a shot to bring him down in the backfield, but Malachi Brown was just able to be just slippery enough to break the tackle, the big defensive lineman, and pick up that first down. You see the Rams not trying to mess around with this game. They know that they have a chance to really put their foot on the neck of this Raiders defense. So nothing fancy. They're just going to pound it right down their throat to eat up some clock, but a bad snap. High snap off the fingertips of Morgan, and he dives on top of it at the 30-yard line. 6.15 to go in a rolling clock. Shepard by seven. This will bring him behind the chains. They'll now have to at least think about throwing the football on a second and long where it looked like Shepard was committed to the run. Barnett, though, does check in. With Taylor and Dorner, the receivers to the far side, Dustin Fisher. See if they stick with it. Another run up the middle. Oh, play, the play action. action. Morgan under pressure. Throws. Incomplete. Intended for Cam Dorner on that far sideline. And Morgan was just late getting that ball out. He had a couple of options early on in that play, and that was dangerous. He held that one in the chamber a bit too long, and that's a lot of times. That's when interceptions happen. If it's there, you see it, throw it. But that's tough. He's rolling out to his offhand side, so that's tough. He had pressure right on his heels, so that's going to be a little bit more difficult for him to flip his hips and get a little bit of velocity on that ball because, again, you don't want to throw a ball that sails to the sideline. So a tough throw that time. Good defense by the Raiders putting their pressure on the quarterback. Made him hold on to the ball a li- little bit longer than what he wanted to. The secondary was able to do the rest and deny that completion. Third and 20 from the 30. Barnett the back. Hill in motion. Morgan throws. Down the sideline for Barry Hill. Touchdown, Shepard. And that might seal the deal for the Rams as they'll take a 29-16 lead with 538 to go in the fourth quarter. And that was something that the Rams had success with early on this season. It's a post-wheel concept where you have that outside wide receiver. He's running that post. That's going to make that safety sit inside. He's going to have to honor that post to give up an easy touchdown over the middle. Once that safety takes the bait, then Hill running that wheel route is able to run freely down the sideline. Wide open target. Seth Morgan throws an accurate ball to put up another touchdown on the scoreboard. James Bozick's extra point is good. Shepard 30, Shepardsburg 16, 538 to go in this ball game. It's like a 30-second break. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rear view mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We welcome you back to Shepherdstown. Our score, Shepherd 30, Shippensburg 16, 5.38 to go, so still a lot of time in this ball game. But Barry Hill hauling in what could be the game ceiling inter- or touchdown, I should say, on the uh, Seth Morgan pass, a 30-yard touchdown pass. And kickoff return from about the one-yard line here for Red Douglas. Douglas has a seam. Douglas across the 30. Good recovery by that Shepard special teams unit. 
after a uh, hole kind of opened up. I think that was Barnett that made the tackle, but the touchdown pass for Shepard extending the lead at the 30-16. Our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. So Shippensburg will take over on its own 31-yard line. Good return, but you could tell Red Douglas was a bit disappointed in the outcome. He is a dangerous return man. Looking back to last season, had 25 kick returns for 848 yards and two touchdowns. So he is a player that is just dangerous with the ball in his hands. Good game between East Strasburg and Kutztown. 27-27. 27-27. This one tipped up at the line. Not sure if they're saying it's incomplete. They do now whistle incomplete. East Strasburg and Kutztown are tied at 27. So that's a big game. It could determine who is currently one of the leaders in the PSAC East. Interesting thing, the West doesn't count towards your conference record. It's just strictly based on division. So if you're wondering about Shepherd's Road, to the PSAC championship game. Very much open, but Kutztown's loss to Cal doesn't hurt them. So, just something to note as we move forward throughout the season. Off balance throw down the field intended for Red Douglas, and a flag comes in. I think Pena got tied up with Benson, and it was just an awkward play that time. So, not sure who the referee's going to call. That don't look like both of them could have been the guilty party on that play. Whereas Benson may have denied Pena a play on the ball, or depending on how the referee viewed it, maybe Pena denied Benson a shot. Benson coming into this game, like we mentioned, only having one catch so far this year. He only had one catch all last year. And you figure a former wide receiver converted to tight end will be somebody that you that you would want to get incorporated into the offense, just giving you that type of versatile look. But, again, that is the call. Defensive pass interference and a fresh set of downs for this Shippensburg offense. But, Pena, (laughs) all things considered, all you're going to do is give up that uh, defensive pass interference is much better than giving up a wide open play. So, you'll take that at this point in the game. Especially in college, in high school, when it's not a Yeah, it's only 15 yards, yeah. Is where the ball was thrown to. Under pressure again, and Baxter brings him down again. Kevin Cows are in on it as well for the Rams. And now you're starting to see what really separates this Rams defensive unit is when they're able to get pressure with their front four without having to blitz. That's what allows you to play that four down lineman, particularly in passing situations. If you can get pressure with your front four without having a blitz, that's a huge advantage. And now you're starting to see that young quarterback starting to show some of his youth and inexperience at this level. Now he's starting to look at the rush, not so much looking downfield anymore, just looking to avoid getting hit, which I can't blame him. I wouldn't want to get hit either. Second and 12, a deep ball for Red Douglas, and he hauls it in. Douglas making another big play. In cover Rams was Gianni Gamble. It's a first down and 10, and Douglas now slow to get up. He looked a little bit shaken up to me, or maybe he was cramping earlier after that pass interference call. I think it is just a cramp. You hope it's a cramp. He's reaching for that hamstring. That was just a precision throw and catch. Red Douglas showing his veteran savvy on the sideline, giving his quarterback just enough space on the sideline to drop the ball in while he's able to shield the defender away from the ball with his body. A good throw and catch by that combination of Stoner and Douglas. So a 4-0-4 to go. Shepard's going to burn a timeout. We will take one as well. 30-second break, 30-16. Shepard on top of Shippensburg. We're back at 30. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. We welcome you back to Shepard. 4.04 to go in this one, 30-16 our score. Shepard on top of Shippensburg, but the Raiders are driving and still a lot of time to go in this ball game. 
as it will be a first down and 10 after the Rams burn a timeout from the 21-yard line. Ship still has all three of theirs. Shepard down to two. Hess is the back to the left of Stoner. Stoner takes the snap. Under pressure again, avoids the sack, looks to run, takes a <laughs> shot. Down to the 25-yard line from J.T. Comeyow. Good job by Stoner to tuck that football away and hold on to it. And, again, he, he's a bigger body kid. He's pretty stout. 5'11", five, 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 210 pounds, and handled himself quite well with that big hit from Comey Yao. Second and ten. Or second down, I should say. Pass incomplete intended for Douglas, I believe, and in coverage Dante Harrison. Will be third down and three after the seven-yard stoner run. 3.30 to go. Ball on the 14-yard line, 30-16, Shepard. You can tell that Red Douglas, he's dealing with some discomfort. That's his second drop of the game. Again, you don't see him put the ball on the ground too much, and that was a very catchable ball. Tight defense that time by Harrison. But you can tell Red Douglas is dealing with a tight hamstring. And, and again, just a warm day and... Even warmer down there on that turf, so cramps are going to become an issue, particularly this late in the game. We'll hand the ball off here, and again, Shepard coming through untouched is Kevin Kowser with another big play. And you can't say enough about the sacrifice that Kowser has made for this defensive unit last year, played that inside linebacker position, and played very well. You could tell he's a talented football player, great linebacker with range, silent, and silent. And this year, they needed that juice on the edge of the defense to try to get some pressure on the quarterback. He's given up a lot of size, but he's taken that assignment, made the most of it, and has been making a lot of plays so far today. Fourth down and three. This could be the ball game. Stoner under pressure again. And brought down Matt Bednarski with the sack. And Shepard will take over on the turnover on downs. The Rams D-line, just a complete effort. Shout out to Nathan Muley, Jack Baxter, Matt Bednarski, and Kevin Kowser. They have owned Shippensburg up front today. All day long. They've done it in a variety of ways. They're doing shifts. They're using stunts. They're using twists. Anything they possibly can. But the biggest thing that they've used today to get to the quarterback, absolute desire. They've just wanted to. They've gotten after the quarterback. He's had to hold the ball a little bit longer. So credit that secondary for making that quarterback second guess himself. But like you mentioned, that defensive line has been playing outstanding football all day today and they've done it in a variety of ways they've done it versus the run and now they're doing it against the pass they've been living in the backfield today just harassing the young quarterback Shepard takes over on the turnover on downs of 246 left Shippensburg still has all three timeouts but Rams in control with a two score lead this will be the first of those timeouts I would imagine after a short gain and less Shippensburg's not going to burn it. The clock's still rolling. Well, you never call timeout. So. At least I didn't see it single four until that moment, but 2.28 to go. 30-16. We'll see if they put any time on the clock or not. I don't know. They will. So the official now comes over and says, my bad. So they'll add the seven seconds, I believe it was, back onto the clock. 30-16, our score, 235. And that's tough being able to, you know, to, to call those timeouts quickly because the referees have so much that they have to keep their eye on on the field. you got 22 football players flying around. you got to keep track of what's going on out there on the field. And when you throw in something where they have to keep an ear open for a coach calling a timeout, that's a lot to manage in the course of a football game. Mark Majewski, the head coach of Shippensburg, 81 and 47 in his career in his 13th season at the helm. So, has had some success with this program. Second down and 10. 2:35 to go. We'll run it. With Malachi Brown, Brown doing a great job today after the three fumbles last week against Kutztown. He has bounced back well. Timeout taken by Shippensburg. About a yard short or a yard or two short of that first down marker. And it's just something of 
of, of technique and just paying attention to detail. You see the way he's holding the ball today? You hear it a lot in regards to how running backs should hold on to the football. You want five points of contact. You want that thing high and tight, ball pressed against your chest as tight as you can. You'll hear fist to the chin. You'll hear a variety of things that are all pointing to the same thing, is that you want to keep that ball up. You don't want to be running with the ball. You don't want any daylight between you and the football because it's nothing for a defensive lineman or a linebacker to come through and just swat at the ball or punch at it as you're going through the line of scrimmage. So Malachi Brown is doing a good job of making those corrections and learning. And you got to give credit to that Shepherd coaching staff of showing faith. Even when he was struggling last week, they still rely on it and they still kept him in the game so that's something that's going to make him rest a little bit easier knowing that the coaches aren't going to abandon him if he makes one mistake but he's doing what he's supposed to do and learning his lessons and improving from week to week brown on third down is stopped in the backfield leading the charge for shippensburg was ray jones and this also the young defense alignment ibrahim diawara the 6'3 240 pound red shirt freshman from Philadelphia, PA. Haven't said his name a lot this year, but does a good job of getting after the quarterback coming off of a game last week where he had one pass breakup and a solo tackle. So you see this defensive unit having to rotate in several people along that defensive front. You want to do that to try to keep your starters fresh, but always an added bonus when some of those reserves are able to come in and make plays themselves. Yeah, I mean, also, they're just not as big as Shepard when you just see this team walk off the field compared to the size that the Rams have. I mean, Shippensburg is a very solid PSAC program, but not quite to the level that the Rams are who are consistently in the running for national championships. Shippensburg hasn't really been there, at least in a while. Um, but a good program, they just don't quite have that size that Shepard has, and sometimes it doesn't make too much of a difference, and sometimes it does. But Shepard will punt it away here on fourth down and seven. It's been a competitive football game, 30-16 our score, 225 left. Still time for the Raiders to move the ball down the field. Barrick sends a line drive punt. Bounces at the 45 and heads out of bounds. Not a far punt, but a good punt because it really doesn't allow for any type of return on that play. So that's all you're really trying to do as this Rams team is looking to close this ball game. You want to limit the opportunities for explosive plays. So if you're able to punt that ball out of bounds, use a directional kick, and limit that chance for a return, that's to your benefit. Yeah, punt return touchdown or something like that with – 217 left at least gives you an opportunity for an onside kick now they'll have to have to drive it down the field to score so a good punt there by Barrick first and 10 from the 38 Stoner under heat again all day and Brutus bringing them down I think with Nathan Muley Richie Aguilar are in there as well for the Rams Sam Stoner, I mean, you got to credit him for standing in there today as I think his helmet came off, so he'll have to come out for a play. And now the backup quarterback, which appears to be for Evan Falco today. He's also listed as a wide receiver, but Falco is going to run on after having to take off the, uh, I guess, backup quarterback coaching type gear and and then grab his helmet. So, Well, they were using him earlier in the game to signal in the plays. Yeah, he was still doing that, and then now he has to run onto the field. And Falco throws incomplete, well short of his intended receiver, probably not very warm up there, but yeah, kind of an interesting situation, and they might just, now Stoner's going to run back on. Thought for a second Falco was going to stay out there, but Stoner does run back on. It's kind of interesting how that works, that the, guy that is the second string at least today and Falco is the one also singling in the plays and then the third string doesn't have to wear the gear but also doesn't have a helmet (laughs) second down and 19 for ship stoner steps up throws underneath complete down at the 40-yard line goes Hess. 
Hess is scrappy. I like him. He's played well today. It's been a, bit, been, a, been a tough day for the Shippensburg offense, but he has been one of the few bright spots. They've had their moments, but just the sacks have really killed them and some of the penalties. Good There's call. a good throw over the middle, complete to Kareem Bryce. There is a flag down in the around the 40-yard line, which may be a hold or some sort of pass interference on this play as we approach 114 to go in this one. Shepard looking to hold on to the win against Shippensburg. Thirty sixteen our score, one fourteen to go in this fourth quarter. Between the Raiders and the Rams here at Rams Stadium. Shepard looking to improve to four and one. There are two flags on the play. They decline the penalty. First down for Shippensburg. Down to the See this Rams defense only having three down linemen. Just going to elect to play coverage, realizing that Shippensburg, they have to take their deep shots if they're looking to get back into this ball game. So great chance for those defensive backs to possibly come away with a turnover, realizing that just the game situation has made this Raiders offense one-dimensional where they're having to score if they want a shot to try to pull off something magical here to close out today's game. So down to the 35-yard line, first down and 10, one fourteen to go. Shepard by 14 as the official still taking quite a bit of time on this one. Maybe these referees are like friends and they just like uh, just a chance to talk to one another throughout the game. That could be it. You know, yeah, just checking just, in, see how they're feeling. We you know? just don't necessarily spend a lot of time together. I don't know. <laughs> could be that. Nothing changed, so <laughs> yeah. that's what I would presume it was. You know, maybe they're making dinner plans for after the game. First down and 10 from the 45. Deep ball on the far side. Miles Greer intercepts it, but it's out of bounds. Pass in, out of bounds, and incomplete. So Shippensburg trying to make the case that it was pass interference on the play, but the referee letting the coaching staff know that it was not catchable. It's true. It was out of bounds. I don't know. I think Nick Verzellini would have been able to pull that in and run it to the house. Well, I'm not playing, so. <laughs> there are exceptions to the rule. I'm one of them. <laughs> Second down and 10 from the 35. Pass complete. To Bryant, he tries to spin out of a tackle. Dante Harrison throws him down around the 25-yard line. That will be a first down for Shippensburg, but under a minute now in this one, 50 seconds to go. 30-16, our score. Stoner operating quickly, throws over the middle to Red Douglas. He goes down and around the 20-yard line. Ship trying to get some momentum. And referee over by the front pylon of the end zone on the home side throws a flag quickly on the play. Like, as soon as the ball was snapped, he threw a flag. So curious what the infraction was on that one. 42 seconds left. I wonder if there's maybe too many men on the field or... what the call may be. But. Well, you will await it. 42 seconds left, 30-16. Our score. It's possible that Coach Majeski wants to be invited to these dinner plans. That's what it is. Heard you guys are going to Chili's. <laughs> he wants in. <laughs> That he has a group on. <laughs> He's got a gift card that he hasn't spent <laughs> since his birthday and it's getting ready to expire. It's burning a hole in his pocket. Looks like Chili's is the call. <laughs> <laughs> Looks 
so was it 12 men on the field? Was, were you able to hear? I wasn't able to really was, hear, but it was a five-yard yeah. penalty, whatever it was. Could have been encouragement. First down and 10. Stoner looking over the middle, incomplete. Omari Terry in coverage intended for Kareem Bryce. 38 and a half seconds to go. Well, the pass was a little bit too tall for the 5'9 freshman Kareem Bryce. It led him a little bit too far as well. So I'll bring up second down and five. And that's tough because the quarterback has to try to get the ball over the O-line and the D-line, so he has to put some air on it to get it over. Shepard brings some pressure again. That one high intended for Bryce, and he is brought down immediately by Miles Greer, but it was incomplete anyway. Good coverage there from Greer and Taley, Terry, excuse me. And it'll be third down and five for Ship. 33 seconds left. Down 14. Ball on the 20 yard line. And Shippensburg, we talked about the, the, the injuries and uncertainty that they've had to deal with on the offensive side of the ball, but they've been able to hold their own today. So the future is looking bright for this Raiders program. Pass complete to Bryant inside the five goes Shippensburg. So at least trying to get some momentum heading into next week. And the Raiders do get the first down. Clock stopping on a first down inside of two minutes. 26 seconds to go. And I believe we are going to get a timeout from Shepard. So let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealityresults.com. Back to Shepherdstown, our score, Shepherd 30, Shippensburg 16, Raiders driving down to the five-yard line, but only 26 seconds to go in this one. Shepherd coming out of a timeout, trying to stop the Raiders short of the end zone. It's first and goal from the five. Sam Stoner's had a solid day in a quarterback for the Raiders. They had an injury to their original starter, McCracken. Sam Johnson and Evan Falco didn't really work out, but Stoner has earned the job at least for now. He takes the snap. He throws back corner of the end zone for Red Douglas. Good ball. Broken up and incomplete. Douglas, I think, did come down with it outside of the end zone. Looked like Christian McDowell in coverage. That was, a, that was a good ball. That freshman put the ball in a very good spot for Douglas to come down with it. He just wasn't able to secure it cleanly before coming down out of bounds. But the quarterback did what he was supposed to do, put the ball in a spot to give his wide receiver a chance to make a play on the ball. And Red Douglas has been dealing with a tight hamstring all day today. Again, just, just a, a, a tough game, but have held their own. Stoner escapes the pocket, runs into the end zone. Touchdown, Shippensburg. With 14 and a half seconds to go, there is a ram down at the 10-yard line. That looks to be Jack Baxter with 14 and a half seconds to go. He does, though, at least walk off on his own power with it being an eight-point game. Ship trying for the point after to make it a seven-point game of 14 and a half seconds to go. Montross is on for the PAT. So this sets up an interesting scenario. We'll most likely get an onside kick following this extra point, whether it's good or not. At 30-22, the extra point is good. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. 30-23, our score. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you, 
Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. To Ram Stadium, 30-23, Shepard on top of Shippensburg. And the onside kick we can expect to be coming here for the Raiders, who just have continued the fight, made it a seven-point game. At the very least, Travis, they get some momentum going into next week. This is their second highest scoring performance, I believe tied for their highest, actually, at 23 in the game against Seton Hill. And they had some good things throughout, even if you don't recover this onside kick, but still an opportunity to. If you, if you can get the onside kick, you never know what can happen here. It's not a very high percentage play, but it does occur occur every once in a while. And coming into the game, if you told the Shippensburg coaching staff that you, you'll have a chance to win this game in the fourth quarter, I'm pretty sure they would have been happy with that scenario, just having the opportunity to come away with a win. Like we mentioned, they were pretty tough on the road last year going 4-2. and two. And looking ahead to next week, Shippensburg does host Westchester. So it would be nice to get a little bit of momentum before going in to have another tough test against a Another top-tier program in the PSAT. Yeah, Westchester had a down year last year, but it appears to be looking more like the old Westchester this season. 30-23 our score, Rams on top. Looking forward to Westchester Shepard this year at Ram Stadium, the head-butting bowl, always a good one. <laughs> Between the Rams and the Golden Rams. But we'll have an onside kick here. Montrose to kick it away for Shippensburg. Rams with the hands team out there. Expecting that onside kick. Montrose sends it on the, the ground. Malachi Brown with a good grab. At the 49-yard line, it was a pretty good kick. If that gets by Brown, could have been trouble for Shepard. But Malachi makes the play, secures the catch. Again, just and the Rams will take over. Another good play by the Rams special teams unit. One, the front line did their job. You saw nobody leaking through from Shippensburg on that play. And then you have Malachi Brown able to catch that ball cleanly. And that was a good kick that time by Montrose. You want that ball to run along the carpet, and you want that big hop. They were able to get that. They probably wanted that ball up a little bit higher. But, again, Brown able to come down, secure that catch, and secure the win for Shepard University. What a bounce-back game for Malachi Brown after the three fumbles last week. No fumbles this week. Ran well on the ground as well. Shepard gets the win 30-23 as Seth Morgan takes the knee. The final seconds roll off the clock, and the Rams are victorious. Travis, what are your initial thoughts on this one? This was the type of game that the Rams needed. They've been facing and dealing with adversity pretty much in all the games that they've played this year. They come out against a very good Shippensburg team. It would have been a team that would have been easy for Shepard to overlook. They did not. They rose to the occasion. They accepted the challenge and came out and did it in a variety of ways. They had a complete football game. That's something Coach McCook always talked about, having a complete football game, not only playing tough for four quarters, but getting it in all three phases of the game because you can look at the offense, defense, and special teams. They all made plays today to secure that win. So a good quality all-around win for this Shepherd football team as they're moving forward into the season and especially coming off of that tough loss from a tough opponent last week in Cutstown. 30-23, your final. We await Dylan Bishop to be joined by the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook, after the Rams' victory. This coach McCook getting ready to make his way after having some conversations. Obviously, this is a close opponent in Shippensburg, only about an hour away, so I'm sure these coaches know each other pretty well, whether it be recruiting a lot of the same players or whatever the case may be, but good thing here, we don't have any skirmishes at midfield. That seems to happen a lot, and we don't have any today, so I definitely like seeing that. That is a good thing. It, it was too good of a football game for it to be marred by some type of extracurricular activities after the game has already been called. You go out there, everybody played well. Nobody really has a uh, reason to have any type of animosity towards one another. 
You go out there, that's good sportsmanship. We played hard. The result was what the result was. You you learn from it and try to move on, but no reason to put yourself in a bad situation where you could be possibly facing suspensions down the road. Yeah, good game between these two teams, 30-23. Shepard extending its winning streak over Shippensburg out the seven straight, dating back to 2005. Coach McCook appears to be making his way toward Dillon. So, Dillon, whenever you have the head man, go ahead and take over. Well, maybe a little bit of a moment here. It looks like now Dillon has him. Deal with Coach Cook. Coach, please, let's start with the offense. You guys were able to put up 30 points on the board. How would you like their execution? You know what? We'll go on Sunday. Look at the tape. You know, it, it just didn't feel like we were ever in sync. I think we executed when we needed to. Um, I thought we obviously took care of the ball better this week, uh, which was a big concern for us. You know, and you know, but we're going to look at the comeback. We're going to enjoy this win. It's a good win over a team that's a big rock for us. And then we're going to come back tomorrow and make forward to the next game. At defense and special teams, you were able to uh, get some pressure on the quarterback today. Got that blocked punt. What, uh, the special team has been a big part of the year this year. What, what's made that uh, unit uh, execute on such a high level? I, I think the commitment that Coach Wright has to special teams and the preparation and our players buy in to wanting to make plays on special teams. You know, we don't just sit there and put guys out there. We put guys out there that want to play and execute. What's the main thing you want to build on? Um, uh, you know what? I want to correct our mistakes. Um, you know, I, you know, we're happy. We're thrilled to win. you got to enjoy winning. You never want to not enjoy winning. And we're going to enjoy winning, uh, no matter how it is. But when we come to work tomorrow, we need to do our job, and we got to correct our mistakes and and be a better football team. Next. Congrats. Nick Travis, back to you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Coach McCook, as well. Some good stuff there from the head coach. Let's go ahead and take our two-minute break, and then we'll roll in to the post-game show. This is Shepherd Ranch Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Mommy, where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. It's the Post Game Show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV 10 broadcast team. Back to Ram Stadium here in Shepherdstown. West Virginia. Shepard getting the win 30-23 over the Shippensburg Raiders. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith here on the postgame show. As Shepard pulls away in this one to get the win, our postgame show is brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We have a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge facebook page travis as we look back on this one 
Shepard with a good overall win. All three phases made plays when they had to. Passing game was solid. Running game was solid on offense. Defense does a good job overall, and and special teams makes a big play as well. And and that's something that this Rams team, they're going to have to embrace that this season. They've had so much success in years past. It's easy to kind of look down the road and think about, well, what are we going to do when we get in the playoffs? What are our plan in the postseason? And, and it's easy to overlook some of these tough opponents that you're going to face in the season, during the regular season. So the Rams just have to have the mentality of we're going to take it one week at a time. You rack up these wins over the course of the season, and then all that postseason stuff is going to take care of itself. And that's what the type of mentality that the Rams were able to play with today. They were able to take care of business for four quarters, all three phases of the game. Yes, certainly, you can get rid of the penalties. That's what kept Shippensburg in the game early on. But... If that's all you're correcting at the end of the day, that's a pretty good day for you to go out there if you just can eliminate those easily avoidable penalties. So the Rams going out there, again, on paper, you're thinking that the Rams should be blowing these teams out. But these teams, they have been – it's been an arms race because they've been bringing in talent, trying to compete against the Shepherd program for years. So it's not so much that the Rams have fell back to the pack as this the pack has kind of called up to them just by – the Rams being so tough over the years, teams have gone out, been doing a better job of recruiting, scouting, preparing their teams. So now you're starting to see that margin of error shrink down a little bit. But fortunately for the Rams, they've shown why they're at the top of the pack. They consistently go out, recruit, get those good athletes, and those coaches have them prepare week to week. And today they were able to go out there, answer the bell, and beat a very which I think could be a a dangerous Shippensburg team towards the end of the year. So Rams going out, getting another quality win in conference, moving ahead in this season and, and continuing to get better and better. I think if you look at the scores throughout the PSAC, a lot of the games have been a lot closer this season than in the past. So I think we're seeing a lot more balance in this conference and in this East division in particular. But let's go ahead and take another two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll get Travis's awards and wrap things up here from Ram Stadium. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa Treasurer. Back to Ram Stadium. Let's get into our post-game awards. We'll start with the electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. They're located at 360 Hank Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com. My electrifying play of the game is going to go to Malachi Brown, the big 43-yard touchdown run in the third quarter with about a minute 46 left in that third quarter. 
again, I think that's something that's going to be the next step for this Shepard running game is being able to get yards after contact, and that's what Brown was able to do on that play. Broke a tackle in the middle of the field and able to take it the rest of the way, 43 yards for the big touchdown run. Malachi Brown has my electrifying play of the game. Yeah, definitely a great bounce-back game for Malachi. What about the uh, collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. Well, I had a couple of nominees for that one, but the one that I had to give the nod to had to go to Shippensburg. Javon Cruz, the big hit on the kickoff return in the fourth quarter, where Javon Cruz was able to fly downfield, looked like Dorner had a lot of wide open space, but Javon Cruz wasn't having it, was able to strike down upon him with great vengeance and furious anger for a collision of the game. Yeah, he must have been angry about something, but <laughs> a good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724-724. Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. What do you got, Travis? Catch of the game. Going to go to the Rams, number 19, Cordell Batten. The one-handed catch in the second quarter right here on the near sidelines. We've got a great point of view for it. There was a controversy as to whether he got his foot in bounds, but the referee said he was able to do enough to get the ball and secure the catch. And Cordell Batten gets my one-handed catch of the game. Finally, your player of the game brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional, will help you with all of your Medicare needs. Go to BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or call 304-283-0864. Well, I'm going to have to switch it up on this one. It's not going to be a player of the game. It's going to be players of the game, and it has to go to that Rams defensive line. They absolutely took control of the game. Kevin Kausner, Matt Bednarski, Jack Baxter, Nathan Muley, and the rest of those fellas up front doing the dirty work, getting after the quarterback, making it a long day for the freshman quarterback on the Shippensburg side. So my players of the game has to go to that Rams defensive line. They got after it today. Yeah, I think that's a good choice there, Travis. So let's wrap it up here from Ram Stadium. Shepard getting the 30-23 to win over Shippensburg today. We will be back next week as the Rams head on the road to take on Lock Haven. But for Daryl and Matt Miller on camera, Dylan Bishop, our on-site producer, Colin McLaughlin back in the studio, who you'll hear from in just a little bit with the post-game scoreboard show. Travis Smith, I'm Nick Verzellini, saying so long here from Rams Stadium. And have a good rest of your Saturday, everyone. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Welcome into the Extra Point post-game scoreboard show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as the Shepherd Rams get the win over Shippensburg by a final score of 30 to 23. A Shepherd now 4 and 1 on the season, Shippensburg falls to 1 and 4. Let's now take a look around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference and get some other scores for you. Already final, you got California University of Pennsylvania defeating Clarion 37 to 7. Cutstown upsets East Stroudsburg 34-27. Game still in action at you can see that second one between Lockhaven and Millersville on your screen. That is at 38 38- to 31 Lockhaven in the lead with 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter it looks like they might have the ball as well 
So it should be a win for Lockhaven coming back after trailing at halftime. It's now switched over to some more scores from around the PSAC. In the second quarter with 10-44 remaining, it is Edinburgh leading Mercyhurst 21-14. With 4.56 to go in the second quarter, it's Westchester now taking a 14-7 lead over Bloomsburg. Later on at 4 p.m., it will be Gannon at Seton Hill, and then at 6 p.m., it's IUP tape taking on Slippery Rock. And that is your Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference scores. Let's now take a look at some Division I top 25 action in NCAA. 4.07 to go in the fourth quarter. It is 34-13. Number six, Penn State leads Northwestern now after being tied at halftime 10-10. The Nittany Lions have taken control against Northwestern. 11.55 remaining in the Fourth quarter, it's number eight, USC, leading Colorado 48 to 34. 403 to go in the fourth quarter. It is Kentucky still leading number 22, Florida 33 to 14. And then kicking off at 330, you have number one, Georgia against Auburn, number two, Michigan against Nebraska. Number 24, Kansas, against number 3, Texas. Then at 4 p.m., it's number 23, Missouri, at Vanderbilt. Number, Or, excuse me, at 6 p.m., it's number 13, LSU, at number 20, Ole Miss. At 6.30, it's number 9, Oregon, at Stanford. At 7 p.m., you have Iowa State at Oklahoma, who's 14th in the country. At 7.30, it's number 11, Notre Dame, at number 17, Duke. At 7.30, it's South Carolina, at number 21, Tennessee, and then at 9 p.m. it's number 12 Alabama against Mississippi State. At 10 p.m. it's number 7 Washington at Arizona, and at 10:30 it's Nevada at number 25 Fresno State. And then yesterday it was number 19 Oregon State upsetting number 10 Utah, 21 to 17. Later on tonight, 8 p.m. kickoff. It's the West Virginia Mountaineers at the TCU Horn Frogs. You can tune in on Talk Radio WRNR 106.5 FM. AM Channel 740 pregame coverage at 5 p.m. for the Mountaineer Sports Network for that one. Let's see if the Lockhaven game has went final or not. It has, so Lockhaven defeats Millersville by a final score of 38-31. to And that'll wrap things up here from the Extra Point postgame scoreboard show. Again, your final score, Shepard 30, Shippensburg 23. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Hope you enjoy the weekend. You've been watching coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddy Law Firm. TV10 Sports thanks you for watching today's game. All rights reserved.